For those of you that are fitness fanatics, those of you that have been working out for a while, if you've plateaued, here's something that can get you to progress again. Here's something that'll build more muscle and strength. Take some of your lifts and do them faster. No, I'm not talking about sloppy form. I'm not talking about having bad technique. I'm talking about lifting explosively. If you do this properly, you'll activate more fast twitch muscle fibers and trigger extra muscle growth. It does require more technique, but this is something that advanced trainees can use to propel themselves to next level. So try it out, lift fast. Ooh. So this, rem power. this reminds me of the similar tip where I'm always trying to communicate that the, uh, the, the best thing to change up in your program or the best thing to do is the thing that you wouldn't do, right? So like, I love that tip for like my uh, slow tempo bodybuilder guys, right? Like they don't train like explosive at all because they're they're not interested in athletic performance. Therefore they tip into the, everything's like isometric, slow squeeze, pause. And they do so much in that that arena that if all of a sudden you tell tell them to do a one, one, one tempo, and like yeah. their body responds. And the, and the opposite is true. Get a guy who's like a power lifter or athletic trainer, who athletic, guy that trains and he's always doing explosive type movements and go, Hey, let's do a four, two, two tempo and yeah. watch, watch your results. Explode. I'd say even more like Olympic lift. There or, you go. Uh, yeah. Like power lifter. I'd probably say to do this because you're going to have to require a lot less load so you can yes. move fast, which they'd never do. Yes. No, this but, has yeah. to be, this has to, in fact, proper. And I'm talking about proper explosive lifting, not fast reps, but proper explosive lifting is more rare than a four, uh, you know, a four second negative. It's actually extremely rare. You never see it done properly because people, including myself, for years, totally misunderstood what explosive lifting should look like. Explosive lifting is using a load that is sub maximal. You're doing something for five reps that, if you wanted to, you could probably do ten or twelve reps. But the idea is to do those five as fast as possible, as explosively as possible, and then stopping well before you fatigue. Nobody does it this way. Everybody that tries this in traditional gyms, except for people who understand Olympic lifting, they end up just doing this to fatigue. It's all about getting as many reps as yeah, possible. Yeah. It needs to be done fast Common and explosively, mistake. and it needs to be done before you get fatigued because you're training, you're training force, fast force, right? How quickly can I generate force? And what you don't want is fatigue to set in because then the reps naturally slow down, and now you're not training that anymore. Now you're training something completely different. Endurance. So, yeah, so to give yeah. an example, uh, if I if I could overhead press, let's say 135 pounds for 10 reps, let's say 10 reps was my max traditional overhead press, but I want to practice something very quickly, I would take a barbell that maybe weighed 90 pounds and I would explode it up in the air to the point where it could fly out of my hands if I wanted to, bring it down and maybe do five reps, put it down, wait a bit, and then try it again. Trying to move the bar as, as quickly as possible. This is what explosive. This is what plyometrics or explosive lifting is supposed to be. Yeah, and I, I mean, you probably haven't heard us bring up this type of a tip in a long time because there's prerequisites involved. Yes, that's why with, I said advanced. Yeah, so <laughs> it's you know it's one of those things. But but then you, you start thinking about longevity and you start thinking about um, you know the way that your your body responds and moves and like how essential it is that you still maintain the ability to move fast uh, in order to avoid injury. Uh, and so to, to be able to incorporate that, once you build a good base of strength and stability and control, um, that's uh, it's an essential element to to make sure that you're also weaving into well, your was, program. Wasn't it our good friend DeFranco that yes. we it was yeah. him that like we, we were talking? He made a great point. Yeah, he made a he made a really good point on the show, and it was something that we had all. And I remember I think all of us had been feeling. Uh, Guilty, especially Sal and I, maybe Justin not so much because he's probably better about including that where we had been neglecting that. And then I had just recently had an experience where I told you I jumped out of my truck and I thought my knees exploded. Like, <laughs> I was just like something that I have done a hundred yeah. times plus, yeah. you know, and just not thinking. And I was like, oh my God, that felt really, really bad. And it's just, I had lost that skill. And, and because I consider myself fit and I would like to consider myself like athletic, I had lost a skill that I had quit training. I was not training that yeah. way for a very long time. And it's like, that's how it happens. Like we all think this happens like overnight, right? We're just like, yeah. Oh, one day I woke up and just, I had bad knees and I couldn't do this. Or I couldn't do that. It's like, no, it's like I neglected 
training my body that way for a period of time. And then it, it uh, like uh, made itself uh, obvious yeah. when I jumped out of the truck. But that was happening to me yep. for the four years in a row of not doing any of that this stuff. This is such a common weekend warrior uh, occurrence. Like this is one of those – like. And usually it's the hamstring and it's, it's like a, a hamstring pull or it's like you move really fast. You just think you can get up and run and you haven't run for years. Yeah. And, and it's just, it's a common weird thing. That's like, um, for, even if you're an athlete for a stint of time, it's like, well, I just feel like I can just get up and do exactly what I did like five years ago. Like this kind of training does require, uh, more skill and you need to have good technique. Cause if you can't lift something with good form controlled and forget about lifting it fast. That being said, there's a few different ways that you can activate in studies that, that have shown to activate the most muscle fibers. So when you're lifting or training, you're activating muscle fibers. Those are the things that are contracting and shortening your muscles. And the idea is to activate as many as possible uh, because then you're going to elicit the, the, the most uh, muscle growth. You're going to get the best results. And there's a few things that do this maximal isometric contractions where you're pu pushing against an immovable object. So you're just pushing as hard as you can. The thing's not moving. Because it's not moving, your body recruits more muscle fiber, more until it recruits as many as it possibly can. Another is just lifting with extreme maximal intensity, which fries people. And the other one is to, is to move quickly. Moving quickly properly because the force uh, that's being generated, because you're calling upon your body to explode with so much force, it activates more muscle fibers. It is extremely uh, uh, hypertrophy producing. In fact, mm -hmm. if you look at some of the most muscular athletes in the world that really don't, they're not strength training athletes, look at sprinters. Oh yeah. Sprinters have, now part of that's genetics, but the other part of it is they, they're trying to move as quickly as possible in these short distances. They're essentially doing strength training uh, when they're sprinting and their muscles, I mean, reflect this. So it's a great way to train. It's just, nobody does it right because people either go too heavy or they think they need to do as many reps as they yeah, possibly they turn can. turn into endurance instead. And that actually, that's actually a waste of time. You might as well just wouldn't, be jumping in place. Wouldn't you also, wouldn't you say that this is the science that supports PAP, right? This is yes. why you do this, yes. right? And that's why if you've ever done that before, totally. it's really fascinating to actually like, I love like you, you share something really good like that and to highlight or uh, so you could feel that uh, difference. Man, go do a PAP a little session right before you go into a heavy squat or a pull up or something like that. Go do a weight deadlift wise that you said fifty percent intensity that you can yeah. lift, so it's not like your max deadlift, and try and rip it off the floor as fast as you possibly can for one rep. Do that like two or three times, and then go over and do pull ups yeah. and watch how easily you pull up. And it's because you've woke up yeah. all those muscles. The lights go on everywhere when you do that. It's no, it's crazy. me. I, so I did it today. So just to give an example. I did some. Uh, they're not. A, it's not an upright row. It's almost like a clean, except I'm not cleaning the weight. So it's a high pull. Okay, so it's like an upright row, but I'm doing a high pull. And if I was doing a heavy upright row, I could do 135 pounds, and I could do I don't know how many reps. If I was going real heavy, I don't know eight, eight maybe ten reps. But instead, what I did is I put 135 on the bar, and I did four. But they were explosive. It was pop as as fast as I could with good form, bring it down, wait a second, do it again. I could have done many more reps. Uh, but after four, I felt like, okay, I'm going to start to get feel the fatigue. I'm not going to be able to move the bar as quickly. That's right, what it is. Right. I'm not going to be able to move the bar as quickly yeah. as I did with the last rep. Now the intent's gone. And that's it. So I put the bar down. What it, what it typically, what a good set feels like when you do this is the first rep is explosive. You should feel like you get faster and faster, and then it should feel like it stalls. And then, you know, you stop. That's typically what it feels like. And yeah. that's for most people around what would you say, Justin? Three to five or six reps when that yeah, starts to kick in, or yeah, even less, or even less. Yeah. Yeah, if yeah. you get really good, so really good athletes. I'm not. This is not me because I don't train this way often. Really good athletes to just turn this on. They don't need to do three reps or two reps to get that maximal. They just boom, turn it on right the gate right away. Um, and, and as far as this, as athleticism is concerned, this is the most athletic style of strength training that exists. Um, if if you ever watch an Olympic lifter do something else, they are remarkably, yeah. you ever watch Olympic <laughs> lifters jump? Yeah. yeah. It's like they're, they're, you know, um, you know, professionals at it. It's like they're high jumpers Yeah, and they don't ever jump. They yeah, just vertical they, jumps anything, off, off the roof. Anything yeah. that requires ex explosive movement, they tend to be good at because they've trained that CNS for an extended period of time on how to light up at once and get all those muscles to organize at once. That's why they're so good at that. Yeah. You, you know, though, this is a tip though, 
So I, I like to go and teach someone four two two first because I think of every yeah. I think everybody neglects that. And when I'm trying to teach form and technique, it, and, and it doesn't matter what level you are, uh, you will most likely benefit from this. I, I could have advanced lifters; they've been lifting for ten years, and I count their I do their tempo, and I'm like they've and they've never done a true four two two. So just by doing that with them, they see tremendous benefit. You could be a brand new lifter; you just got started. And you're also not doing that, and why? And because it's it's less technical as something that's explosive, and it's less yes. dangerous, yes. right? In fact, it allows me as a trainer to really highlight their form and technique because they're having to go so slow on the negative. So this is kind of where I go first, and then they I I blow their mind with the results that they see from that, and we and we squeeze all we can out of that for a couple months, and then I transition them into something like what you're saying now, because now they've learned how to control the weight, they they squeeze the benefits from that, and then we go to the other end of the spectrum and do something explosive, and then they see those those great results also from that totally so great 100%. way to pair those together 100 percent. anyways uh i uh I, we, I got a message and i thought this would be good to share on the podcast somebody asked us about the sourcing of the meat that comes with uh one of our sponsors butcher mm. box we talk about butcher box all the time we've been with them for a long time they mail uh it's a it's a it's a company that mails meat to your door essentially you get a box of you know beef chicken fish all that stuff yep. And it's healthy, and, and they said, well, what's the sourcing? This person was really into, like, I want to know the specifics. You know so why they were asking that? You know why they were asking that? Why? Because you, you know that in that, in that world that world or that, that um, business, that's a very popular hustle. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. Where they- It says grass-fed, but then they finish they with- They finish uh, with grain. Yeah, or, or even the sourcing where they're yeah. getting it from. They're, 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 they're claiming that they are, they're getting it from all these organic sources, and some of them are, some of them oh. are not. And like they, subcontracting it somewhere yes, else. Yes, yes. And so that tends to be why. And I know there's a couple of those businesses that have gone under because of that. Well, so, so mm. check this out. First off, they use third-party testing for um, welfare of their animals. So they're among the most humane- companies they will only work with. But here's beef. It's 100% grass-fed, grass-finished, and it's certified humane uh, with the global, uh, and also certified by the Global Animal uh, Partnership. So it's certified through humane and through the Global Animal Partnership. Uh, their pork is also certified through both, all vegetarian fed. By the way, none of them are given antibiotics or horm hormones. The chicken is free range. It's organic. It's partnered. It's Global Animal Partnership Step Three certified, no antibiotics, and um, and then uh, their their seafood is all wild caught, sustainably harvested. I mean, their sourcing is incredible. Their turkey, same thing, free range, yeah. Global Animal Project certified. Like they go out of their way to source the best. Uh, That's right. I feel like even chickens, even really rare to find these days. I mean, yes. at this point too, there was like a shortage. I know for for a while there. So if they're still not like confining all of them and then giving them antibiotics and everything, that's a huge. I mean, this is what makes them deal. the leader in the space because that's been one of the the biggest things that these that these companies have done is a lot of them start off as like these private organic grass fed grass finished type of farms then they outgrow their farm and then they have yeah, to outsource yeah, yeah. Yeah. and then when they do that they don't they don't go out of their way to third party test or to right. do all these things to make sure that it stays within those where they just go I was focused on scaling and so there's been a few of those companies that have been taken down uh, because of that. Because so, they were caught being a little... Yes. Well, yeah, yeah. I so, I mean, it's cool to know that, you know, we've partnered with, uh, in my opinion, the best in the in the space yeah. and they continue to grow yeah. and do well, you know? Dude, I got another story about my three-year-old. I, I keep coming with stories, but I got another one for you guys. What'd he do now? So, <laughs> he's he's on a terror. Huh? Bro, I'm a little worried. So, he's so... Like, he's verbally very descriptive. He knows how to push buttons. He reads people's faces and then he'll say something even more absurd. And so we have to <laughs> we have to really pay attention to it, like ignore him, act like it's no big deal. Otherwise, he keeps going. But he's really good at it. And um, people who don't know this, he'll say stuff to them. Be in conversation, they'll say something, and they always look at me like, like, what are you teaching your kid? I'm like, I don't teach him any of that. So my aunt came over last night, oh, and no. we're all having a great time. And she's she's trying to win him over. She doesn't see him very often, but towards the you know halfway through, he's hanging out with her. They're playing. They're coloring. They're great. He's having conversations with her talking about all kinds of different things and then she asked him she goes how did you uh how did you like the party the other day we had my, my, all of our cousins over it's like oh it was really fun we were playing and she goes did everybody was everybody playing with your toys and he goes yeah that's really hard and she goes did you play with your cousin angelo angelo is my nephew it's my son's yeah, uh, yeah. My, my, my brother's son and my son and his son are buddies but yeah. they're also three and they're also they also so fight. They fight, but they, they make fight up and they play and, and they fight and yeah. they play and it's it's, yeah, it's yeah. hilarious. Typical. 
So she's like, what about Angela? Did you play with Angela? She's, oh yeah, we had a lot of fun. You know, but he started taking my toys. She goes, oh, he, he did? How does that make you feel? And he goes, well, I want to get a real gun and shoot him in the face. Holy yeah. shit. And my, and my aunt looked at me like, what? And I'm like, listen, I don't say that. I don't know what he's saying. Oh my God, bro. But her expression and everything, I'm like, oh my God, this kid. And I'm like, inside, I'm like, I hope she knows that we don't talk like that. Yeah. Well, that what's so weird about that like is that not only do you not talk about that, but then you guys also limit him to even tech and he's not in the team. No, like, nothing. Where, He's not in uh, now he daycares. Has, he's not like where no, does he? Dude, does he, even he just re, he just knows how to get people to he, react. We have we have Nerf guns, and so we play with the Nerf guns, right. and we always say, you know, don't aim in the face. So maybe he got it from there. He also knows I have guns. He see me clean them. I have no idea, <coughs> but he'll say some shit like that, or he'll oh say something my like, God, bro. yeah, he'll say things all the time, like um, uh, uh, instead of saying I love you, I love your booty. I want to squeeze your booty. So people are like, what did he say? I'm like, I don't know. Leave the kid. <laughs> <laughs> what are you saying, dude? You got your hands full. I want to play, and I want to take him aside. And be like, you can't say that. Oh but then he'll say it. If I say that to him, then he's gonna say. He, it now more. he's like banking that, like, oh, yeah. they, they, they don't oh, like that one. Geez. I like to punch so and so. I like to say, okay, all right, buddy. Oh my god! Uh, I, I mean, thank it. God he's homeschooled because you know what? That would be you'd be every day oh, having to pick oh, him up from school, gosh. man. <laughs> yes, every day, bro. You'd be picking him up from school. Oh, bro. <laughs> I've heard stories. I mean, like most of the drawings I did growing up would have gotten a lot of parent conferences, oh, you know, man. of them talking. Because I remember, like, there was a kid at school that had that. Like he had drawn all these like pictures of people exploding and this and that and they were just like oh my god they're freaking out and i'm like are you serious yeah. like i was talking to my friend it was his son that that was doing that i'm like dude i drew way worse than this like <laughs> oh. when i was a little kid oh my god but you know it's like eh, i don't know dude i don't have any then advice. he also he's also like, <laughs> he'll be really expressive with his emotions uh you know jessica bought him this emotion pillow have you guys seen these a no. motion pillow? It's called a motion pillow. No, no. This is the one where you like just squeeze it. No, like, no, 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 no. It's got a circle on it, that a diagram, good with that. and it's got the main emotions. But then those emotions connect, so it's like happy. But are you excited? Are you elated? Are you whatever? So it's good to teach your kids like, how are you feeling right now? Mm. You know, I'm feeling. Are you angry? Are you frustrated? Are you? Oh, I'm angry. Okay. Are you this, this, or that? And then so, but it it teaches them all these different things. So now he's like super expressive. So he's like, you know, Mama, I was waiting for you. But then I got really sad and I felt really lonely and I was disappointed. You know, he'll say some stuff, some stuff like yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. From this kind of so thing. So he can articulate yeah. his emotions. Well. And then afterwards, I mean, oh, that's a good, that's a good thing. The first part of that's really good. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh my God. Yeah, I know, dude. Uh, you know, talking about em uh, emotions, feelings, right? This is all like human nature stuff. Really interesting. This kind of reminds me of what, what's been on my mind lately. I have two, uh, I have a family member and I have a close friend. Uh, that both have uh, husbands that have um, recently uh, lost their job. And um, they both have come to uh, Katrina initially to ask for like her help or guidance or like what, you know, as a wife, you know, how do I support this? Have you ever gone through something like this yeah. with Adam? And like, what, what do I do? And she's like, you know, uh, you really should talk to Adam about this because he has talked to me about that. And, you know, he shared moments in his life. And this was before we were together. Uh, where the only times that he's ever expressed like feeling depressed was, you know, during a time where he had to let go of his house and stuff in his early 20s. And, you know, I, I'm talking to her and it's really, it's like, uh, you know, there's there's certain things that uh, each sex has that's unique to them, right? Like there's no man will ever be able to understand and fully identify what it's like to carry a baby. Just right. there's, I don't care how good a, a woman draws the picture for you or tries to explain it or, you know, whatever, like you just, you will never have understood what that connection truly, truly feels like. Right. Cause it's unique to them. And it, I explain it like that when it comes to providing for a family. And that's not to say that there's not women that don't provide for their family and stuff like that. But there's it's something... very much as like a male identity. Yeah, thing, exactly. You know? There's something innately in in men and me in particular. And I've said, I'm sure my family member and my friend who I'm talking about. And it's, it's hard to explain what that feels like when you lose that ability. And I've... And this is... I've got two going through it right now. I've had... Uh, my best friend, I watched go through it also. Yeah. I mean, it was like the worst depression he's ever been through. And it's really interesting how that is, right? Like, I don't know if you guys are familiar with either one experiencing that yourselves or watching somebody else go through that. 
but it, I don't know. There's this thing, and I remember I felt that when I had a son. One of the, and, and I remember you guys and other people said this to me because I remember thinking like, "Oh man, I'm gonna have a kid, and yeah. I, I'm already a hard worker, and uh, how am I gonna balance that?" And everyone's like, "Don't worry, you'll see. You're gonna find a new gear. You're gonna find a new level of like being able to wanting to provide for your kid." And everybody was right. It was like all of a sudden that happens, and it's like that's my main focus is just I have to be able to provide for my family. And the 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 thought of losing that or not being able to do that, uh, what that can do for a man. And it also reminds me of the conversation that Adam Lane Smith had with us on like, uh, like one of the things that men need is to uh, have a goal that they mm -hmm. go after and achieve and conquer. And in a situation like that, uh, he's lost that, right? That like his, his yeah. goal is to provide for the family, do that. And so in those moments, how, how much he needs that. And then how unfortunate it is for the spouse who wants to try and help, right? So I've got the family member you know, talking to me and the wife talking to me and they're like, you know, and I try and say this and I try and do this and then it just blows up in my face and then then we get in a fight and I feel so bad and I'm like, I don't understand. Like, I don't know, I, I, can't, I can't speak to him. I can't do this to him. I can't do this for him. Like, what do I do in this situation? Have you guys had that? Have you experienced that yourself or you had family go through that before? I think mm -hmm. it's tough because... Um a lot of a man's identity is in is in that um and and i think i think both men and women understand this i think yeah. um you know when women are seeking a, a mate what the man does for a work and his type of his ambition tends to be at the towards the top of criteria whereas men don't really look at that right You're, like you ask a man do you care what kind of car she drives or what kind of usually no i don't really care um so we know that it's like a big deal and it's important um and i i don't know if you can I don't know if you can help him by like you don't know if telling you can him communicate anything to him other than weathering it, you yeah. know, together and supporting. Like I, that's a tough one. I, I I don't know. I guess I could kind of identify with that on on a level where it's like you're not going to say something to me in that situation. That's no, gonna I think pumping make you it up, better more you like know, other than yeah, like that might be. Good. You know, yeah. okay. Let me think. What would I want to hear? Yeah, like well, I'll tell you I, what. I, I'll tell you what. Like I positive said. Uh, feedback. Well, what would you guys want to well. hear if this happened to you? Right. If say this happened to you, you lose your job, whatever, you go home and you're struggling, like can't find work. What would you want to hear from your wife that would it's, help you? It's actually more of this. It's I know you I, got. It's this. what I don't want to hear. Definitely, yeah. that, there's def that's easy. That's because that's because that, 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 that's, yeah. I think that's the that's the thing that you yeah. have to understand right now is that at this time in my life, going through something like that, it's one of the, it's the closest to uh, the deepest depression or fear or you know, anxiety, anger, frustration, all the emotions I'm 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 battling and I'm wrestling with, and it's 100 percent on front of top of mind all the time. Right. So yeah. uh, the thing that I what is not going to help it is, uh, you know, bombarding me with other things or reminding me of how much this is stressful or we're not we're doing, trying to do the work for them, like right. finding all these options for them and yeah, like making it making to them. like so uh, what I'm trying to 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 figure out in a, in, a, in a moment like that is I'm trying to solve this equation. So I actually want like peace at yeah. that to, to figure that out. Like I just want, cause I know there's an issue. It's all I'm thinking about and to, I don't want to be distracted with anything else. I want to try and solve this problem. So the biggest way that you can support me, and this is what I would tell Katrina, this is what I told my, mm -hmm. my, my family member. So with that as a spouse is just like, is to try your best to alleviate anything else going on in his life. So like, I don't know if, you know, he handles the bills or you handle the bills. I don't know if he normally is the one that goes out and does a grocery shop. Or the, like, I don't know who does what, but taking things off his plate, even though maybe he has more time now because he doesn't have a job, which I'm sure this is the the, the dynamic that so, happens. It's yeah. like, hey, you got this free time now. You're not working. Yeah. Why don't you do this now too? Why don't you do that? And it's like, meanwhile, I'm sinking in this depression because yeah. I'm not able to provide for my family. And so actually being able to support me in a, in a, in a time like that to help me solve this problem because I need something as a goal to go conquer and figure yeah, out. I think, you know, I'm thinking about that. I'm trying to put myself in that situation. I think what I would want to hear is not a lot, but what I would, what would help me would be something along the lines of, I got your back no matter what. Yes. Like yeah, if yeah. I heard that, like as, I as a husband, you. I trust you. As a husband, I believe in you. I think, let me, doesn't it give yeah. you the chills? You, you're struggling. You, you lost your job. You come home and your wife hugs you and kisses you. Like, I yeah. got your back. I know we're, we're right or die. Yeah, Are you kidding me? Do. That's exactly I'll drag what I said to both of them. I said, if you say anything to him, remind him how much you love him and that you believe in him. And that you got his back. Yeah. I wouldn't have married you if I didn't think you're the type of man that could figure this out. Yep. Right. I know you will. 
I know you will, and I'm here. Anything you need me for, that's you it. tell me. And that's it. Like that's that's, it. that's yeah. it. And then I'll come to you if there's certain that's things it. that you can assist in that. And but I I, I have to be the one to go set the the goal or the thing yeah. and then go conquer it. Yeah. And it's like it's such an interesting, weird uh you, you, you know what it reminds you just made me think of them. This is gonna sound so whatever, but you remember the movie Three Hundred? Yeah. Remember the scene where, yeah, where he sends her off he sends off she sends him off to war and she like well, there's the other part. There's both parts. One part, he's the, the messenger comes, tells him, "Hey, we're gonna come invade or whatever," and and he's like, you know, bow down to us. And he, you could tell the king is like, "What do I do?" And he looks over at his wife, and his wife looks at him like, "Do it." Yeah. And he just boots the guy in the freaking <laughs> hole. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> or the part when he goes off to war, and yeah. she, what did she say to him? She says, um, e uh, "Either come back with your shield or, or on your on shield." It. Yeah. And you know, as a man, you hear your wife say something like, I got your back. I got your back. Like, yeah. what's right or die? Yeah. Are you kidding me? I'm, I got five more gears now because yeah. you just said that. Yeah, yeah. I feel more powerful. And that's what Adam Lane said. It's a hard one for, you know, when you're in a state of fear and yep. control. And, yeah. like, you know, this is like a very hard one for women, I think. You know, to to support in that regard. Yes, but that's the best bet is for you to really just support in uh, in that fashion where you're just pumping that's them. That's a up. tough one. Well, it is a tough one. That's why I mean, I, I was talking to my my family member and my close friend, the the two wives that are going through this, and I and the, I started with like, oh man, I, I feel for you because I know how difficult we can be in a situation like that. Right, and it's like all the things that you think to say and do probably aren't, aren't helping. And like it, and it's because it's a very unique situation that he's in right now. And it, and the natural tendencies that you might have to try and help and support aren't necessarily what he probably wants mm -hmm. right now. And that's or even what knows I, what he wants. Right. Like, right. Yeah. Or exactly. Or even know, which I also gave someone else that advice. I said, listen, and if he wants to take off for the day, and go, you know, for a bike ride or a car drive, and he's he's not getting it. Like, let him be. Like, yep, you him can, do don't. It. <laughs> yeah, if you married that man, he's solving you, problems right, right now. Right, exactly. That's what's happening. That's right. Now, this, said, by the way, if you if you married that man and you believe you got a good man, and you don't, that's not changed right now. Just we're going. I'm through glad a hard you time. said that because there's right. a difference between hardworking husband that you know lost right. his job, than a degenerate, yes. you know, loser. And that's like, there's a big difference. We're talking about two yeah. very yes. smart, successful, no, no, good men, right? That these these women have a Fence for that other one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And, and that's why I said, like, and that'll probably happen. There's going to be a moment where he probably even feels overwhelmed himself and needs to just shut down for a minute, go for a drive, yeah, go for yeah. a ride, get away. And it's not him being lazy. It's not him not like no. he, all he's probably thinking about is all of that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so give give that space, be patient with that, remind him that you believe in him, that you trust him, that you love him, yeah. and he'll solve it. And yeah. that's the way he's going to solve it. I love it. these kind of like discussions. I love the dynamics between uh, men and women because we generally are different. And it's important to understand each other because then, like the whole classic, you know, um, your wife comes to you, she's telling you what's going on. She doesn't want you to fix it. Most of the time, they don't want an answer. That's right. They just want, usually they just want to think it out verbally and process it. So you just listen. I'm terrible. I'm a lot better yeah. now than I used to be, but I was terrible at this forever. Where my wife would come to me with, and I'd just be like, "Do this, do that, do this, do that." Yeah, you gotta be and, an active listener. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's yeah. it. I mean, that was that's a great example. And another example that I use, it's just like that. You know, with the the wife does not want the husband to be like, "Go do this." Yeah. You know, she doesn't want yeah. you to solve the problem. She wants yeah. to be heard. Yeah, she's talking about her boss. She wants to be like, heard, well, and she wants empathy. <laughs> that's not what I hear. Yeah. She wants empathy and understanding yeah. from you, yeah. and to be just a listener at that and time. And then she'll figure it out. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And and that is so different from Ugh. us guys because <laughs> if I come to you guys from your problem, I don't want empathy and I don't want to be heard. No. Oh, in fact, I want the answer. In fact, <laughs> or else hey, I wouldn't come to you. How how funny is that? If 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 you came to me, Justin, and yeah. you were telling me about a problem, mm -hmm. and I just looked at you and said, "Wow, that's that sucks. That sucks, man. That's really man that must be hard. Yeah, that must be really hard." <laughs> You'd be like, "Bro, I feel worse." Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. So why did I tell yeah, you anything you got, right now? Hey, you got nothing for me. <laughs> yeah, you got nothing for I'm me. Never Boy, I anything. chose the wrong friends. I'm never sharing anything. Like, well, anyways, yeah, yeah. I gotta go get some eat. Yeah. And and vice versa, right? You do that to your wife and you're like, You've got I've got honey, just do this. Yeah. You're like that I don't want it. No. Well, yeah, it's not what I want to hear. No. It's like wait happened, a second, that's the answer. Happened, in fact, it happened this morning. Well, I don't remember that's what she so was talking weird. about. But she was calling me and she was literally processing it was the other morning, processing out loud of what was happening. And yeah. she, as she's talking to me, I'm trying to kind of figure out, okay, is it this? We, okay, so what you mean is this? And then and then by the end of it, she's like, No, I get it. I think I know what I'm feeling right now. 
Now, old me would have been terrible. Yeah. Would have been terrible. I would have been like, well, just do this. Well, just don't do that. Well, why don't you go here? She yeah. would be like, okay, asshole. That's yeah. not what I want from you. Yeah, yeah. In this yeah. moment. Uh, I try. I mean, I told both of them that they, they should listen to that. The Adam Lane Smith episode, I think, encompasses a, a, a lot of that. that a lot's really- been lost in modern times with, um, you know, because for, for a while there, we had to do the, like, you know, men and women uh, are equal. And I, I, I get why we had to, you know, push that and, and fight for that. But what ended up getting lost was that we're different. Yeah. And that n- one isn't better than the other, but that we're different. And so we stopped understanding each right. other because- you know, and I know what they you know they say like um, like look here's the deal a woman goes out on a date with a man, uh, and I know I know what they say now I like to split the bill no you don't like you would like it if he if he offered to pay the whole thing or open the door for you most women would like that that's a that's a nice gesture and it feels good there's a big difference with what people say and what they actually want totally and it's just it's it, it's so funny to me because it's just like just say what you really want. Yeah. You know, <laughs> like it's okay if it's not like politically uh, the right thing or like the culture isn't like trying to push you in that direction. Like, yeah, but you don't like that. So we don't have to behave that way. I mean, I, I, I feel really, I feel, uh, I feel bad for this generation. The young, yeah. the kids that are teenager, teenagers to like 20 something year old right now is a, is a tough generation because of the messaging. We really, we really fucked up 30, 40 years ago. It's we might've been way, now. way too much on one direction. But then we overcorrected and came the other direction. So now you have this generation of people that are just, and I have it. I have I have nieces and nephews in that age group, and they're just like, they're lost because they've been, they've been poisoned with this way of thinking that like, oh, that it's not that Listen, we're you can't it's it's not okay to say something like uh, a woman is very different than a man. I we're know, very right? different. <laughs> we just are, and we think differently. We operate differently. We each have different strengths and, we- way, and a- weaknesses, and that's actually a beautiful thing. Yeah, it's it's a beautiful thing. It's, it's and the it makes- missing link that we don't have listen, as men. Listen, yeah. we, you know, it's like ridiculous. Would you would you want to have a team that has to accomplish a goal and everybody be identical, or would you want to have a team where everybody's different and their strengths and weaknesses fit perfectly together? That's right. So it's it's like the perfect. Our strengths and weaknesses are designed. To come yeah. together, to be whole and one, to be this, to to move forward and, and accomplish great things. If you have, if everything's the same, then you're, you're something's lacking, and the negatives get amplified and the positives get muted yeah. uh, as a result of yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. But know? definitely for all the spouses that have a man that is jobless right now, that has to be one of the more challenging. Of have you seen the divorce rates on um, when a when a man loses his job versus a woman or? When the when the wife is the breadwinner the, and the husband stays home and all that stuff, the divorce rates are higher. Mm-hmm. Yeah, they're much higher. And I think there's a lot of reasons why, but I think part of it is it really messes with the psyche of the of the husband, um, and probably even uh, the wife as well. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah, you know. Yeah, I mean, I watched it growing up. I know it was definitely a, a lot a lot of my. Uh, like uh, obviously overcorrection of like needing security and mm-hmm. cons- and money and all those things like that came from that was a, a consistent uh, b- fight in our house mm-hmm. was that my stepfather was you know, not able to provide for the family and you know it was the root of so many fights. So and you know back backing up a little bit the world just lies like what that means is when you look at media media is designed mostly to sell things to you and so you get a lot of lies and so these these. I mean, every younger, every generation gets lied to, but the media is just so much more powerful today than it used to. It was powerful when we were kids. It's so much more powerful today. And so the messaging that that kids get is so, it's all lies. Like, okay, I'll, I'll make a statement that everybody listening to this podcast will agree with. If you listen to the world when it comes to health, you're going to be fat, sick, and unhealthy. I think that's obvious, right? The world gives you the wrong information, what you need to do, how active you should be, how you should eat. It's all terrible. Well, the world lies to you about Almost everything. And it's going to tell men you're going to find happiness and sleeping with a lot of women and just making a lot of money and having kids and a family. Oh, that's a ball and chain and that it's ties you down. It's a burden. And ladies, you're going to find all the meaning and purpose of your life in a career. And oh, yeah, you should sleep around too. It's very empowering. And, you know, having kids, oh, that's so oppressive and terrible. It's a terrible lie. The data doesn't even support, doesn't even come close to supporting any of that. It's yeah. terrible. So yeah. it's like one of the best things you could do is, is, is not follow the world, I think, and you'll probably end up a lot better. What, what do you think? Basically. What do you think are the the greatest consequences that we're going to see of those lies? Um, Depression and anxiety. It's already there. We're already seeing it. Depression and anxiety are are higher than they've been 
I think that we've ever recorded, but especially among the youth. I told you guys about that graph, right? Yeah. In every culture that we've tested, cross cultures for decades, there's a U-shaped graph with happiness where kids tend to be very happy uh, until you get to middle age, then things get challenging. So happiness drops. That makes sense, right? Bills, mortgage, little kids take Stress, a while. All that stuff. And then as you get older, the happiness starts to grow again. Now it starts low. Now kids are unhappy. Adolescents, teenagers, kids in the 20s are unhappy. And then as they get older, they start to get happier. And I think that's because uh, that's because they're being fed so many freaking lies, dude. Anxiety yeah. and depression. Through well, the we're, we're, we're placing all these adult problems uh, on their plate when, when we should just be conscious of letting them be kids and, you know, really protecting that, that innocence and, and allowing them to, to build and develop. And I was having this conversation with my aunt yesterday. My aunt and uncle are, are great. My uncle Mike and Aunt Margaret are just really, really smart, good parents. I always have great conversations with them. And we were talking about access to the internet. And I have a, there's a huge difference between my older kids and my younger kids in terms of how I'm going to treat this. My older kids especially my oldest, unfettered access to the internet. He's now 19, and when he was growing up, I was young and working a lot, and I just didn't pay attention. My younger ones are not going to get access for a long time, and, and when they start getting access, to be very controlled. And the conversation essentially was like this. It was like the example I gave was I wouldn't give a kid or a teenager unfettered access to, to junk food either. I wouldn't have a house filled with candy, and I wouldn't tell my kid, you know, you make the choices. You can because they don't have the ability, right, to do that. Did you ever go to one of your friend's house and that was their yes, their mo? Yes, yeah. I have, I remember it like what a big fail that was. It Crazy. was like, and that kid was always the one that was sick. Yeah, like it just continuously was always coming down with something. Uh, was was always like you know into the sports, but then had to like stop because of some condition or something. But like it was. The thought was that if it's all out here and their friends come over, like it'll be there, they'll have one or two, and they'll just leave it alone. No, we ate the whole bowl. No, you don't have the ability to discern. You're just not. It's not appropriate. You're not. You're not there yet, right? Well, and okay, adults have a tough okay, time and, with it. And we again also understanding how to uh, mold change to times because you could do that 50 years ago. 50 years ago, you could have almost every type of food in the house and leave, have unfettered. Yeah, because what was the food? Because exactly. Yeah. But we now have, the science has come so far to engineer yeah. this food to be so hyper palatable and addictive yep. that a child's brain at the, just does not have the ability to do it. No. They already don't have the ability. And then you you add in the fact that it's been engineered so well yep. to make you eat more. And the more you that, eat it, the more you crave it. Yeah. And it's like this cycle. And, and so there. with the internet, it's like that as well. Like you give a kid who's 12 unfettered access to the yeah. internet what's on the internet everything that's literally what's on the internet yeah. everything yeah and who's talking to your kid on the internet whoever wants to whoever's anybody that wants to communicate an idea a good one or a bad one a good narrative or a bad narrative a a real religion a false religion or whatever it's all there and so your kid has adults are this is tough for adults let alone children so, you know, giving them that unfettered access, bad idea. It's you know, idea. It, to, to, get a, to defend you a little bit because of the, the time we grew up, I mean, granted, 20 years ago, um, it wasn't, again, it's like giving the analogy with the food thing. Uh, the internet had those things too, but you would also have to be, uh, you could, your mom couldn't be on the phone while you were also on there. Sure. The one computer everyone had was probably <laughs> sure. in the living room. Yeah. It took 15 yeah, minutes. Natural barrier. It took, took 10 yeah, minutes. Yeah, it took 15 really. minutes just to get onto a website. Yeah. Like, And so like, most of us kids were just like, ah, oh, forget this. This isn't worth just, it right now. Where now it's so imagine, easy. Just it's imagine, right here, right. dude. Just if you could put yourself back to, this is hard to do because as an adult, you tend to put yourself back in an age with your current wisdom but just try to remember how you were when you were 14 years old what you thought what you did what you whatever now imagine you had an iphone oh, with the internet on it i know it would have been yeah I would a have been, nightmare I, my brain would have melted it would have yeah. been an absolute nightmare like yeah. all the stuff you would read of course the pornography the whatever would have been crazy yeah. So I'm I'm dying to know, uh, which I'm guessing it's Justin because Justin normally misses transitions like this. They we're talking about <laughs> seven types of friends that everyone That's me. should. Oh, that is. How did you not transition in this conversation? Yeah. Oh, I got a great. I was going to. You, yeah. you Sorry, the Justin. Gun. I apologize. I'm, my, I apologize. My topics are on point. Yeah, yeah. Like, I apologize, <laughs> Justin. I just I just thought that was you missing your transition. Yeah, no, I'm like um, old me, dude. I'll seems, give you that. Yeah. Old old me. This feels it like a, a really good place to transition to a, a cool, topic. I'm super curious about. It was a pretty cool article. Yeah, let me hear it. Yeah, yeah. I'm gonna pull it up for you. So it's the kinds of friends that everybody needs and it broke them down 
by an archetype or what? Yeah, so it's a, it's a, a psychologist and friendship expert uh, came up with these. So okay. there's one category are workplace friends, and these are work friends keep your spirits up, validate your complaints about your job, provide much needed predictability in your work lives, um, and they're showing studies show that uh, the importance of having work bestie increased since the COVID nineteen pandemic. Uh, so people are like they they notice like oh I I need friends at work, and that's a category of friends. Then you have your close friends. These are your biggest cheerleaders, trusted confidants, uh, like their, their mutual respect and a sense of comfort and security. There's lifelong friends. These are people who've been with you for years. Typically, it's like a sibling or a cousin or someone you just grew up with. Yeah. Then there's older friends. Having a friend that's 10 years or older uh, tends to have more life experience, can bro provide broader, um, uh, you know, broader perspectives and wisdom. Um, younger friends, younger friends are good because they'll give you an opportunity to mentor and to teach. That tends to bring, bring the best out of us yeah. when we have those kinds of friends. Then there's friends of convenience. Friends of convenience, uh, offer a sense of belonging or support during periods of adjustment. Um, or, or maybe it's a friend for a hobby. So I meet this person at the gym and it helps motivate me to work out or this person at this, in this church group and it helps me, you know, to attend, you know, those, those meetings and stuff. Um, and then there's uh, same life stage friends. So I'm a parent, they're a parent. Yeah. Or I'm mm -hmm. a grandparent, they're a grandparent. You got all these things in common. I thought these were great categories. Are great. So they're they're missing know, a big one, though. What? Uh, the imaginary friend. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so you want to know the problem? You, had best you know what? You know the <laughs> problem with that article is, it, and it's why it's it's uh, kind of terrible, is because ain't none of you know anybody who has seven friends. And all this, all the stats on that show that the average person like reports three. they only have one friend oh, or one? none. Oh yeah, did you well, guys here. see that? Wow. Did you guys see that article on the average like thirty year old man doesn't is why like we're at the highest level of loneliness ever uh, that doesn't wow. report they have even one friend. And then like the the next next one is like well, one like there, so the fact oh, I know hey, it's hard you can't for have one friend but here's the seven best you should go get like Jesus I'd just be happy with <laughs> one that's what most of these kids are saying. Well hold on let me ask you guys this wow let's think of these categories okay. Workplace friends, obviously, we got workplace friends, right? Huh? Yeah. yeah okay. All right. All right. <laughs> <laughs> Justin's like, not yeah. me. I'm Total bad. work friend. So we're yeah, work yeah. friends. Then there's close friends. All right, you guys cross into a couple categories. I would also consider you guys as close friends and workplace friends. Yeah, mentor, lifelong friends. Wisdom. I would. I have a cousin that I grew up with. You guys, you guys, and you. I know you talk about lifelong. Yeah, yeah. Justin, I don't think has any lifelong friends. Uh, I, no, I mean just like friends I grew up with. I guess yeah, count, yeah. but not like um, yeah. No, yeah, I'm not real close with cousins or siblings. Okay. So or you got lifelong friends. I Me mean, my brother, but yeah. Do you guys have an older friend? I, well, Doug, does Doug count? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Are you? Yeah. <laughs> 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 most of my, I'm the young guy, so most of my friends are older. So that's, oh, okay. that's an easy one. Younger friend. Uh, I don't know if I have a younger. Yeah. I don't think I have a. Sure, you do? Sure. Of course I do. Come on. I mean, you always catch me mentoring and hanging out with 20 year old kids yeah. and just like that. I you thought it was me? just because you wanted to feel younger. <laughs> no. <laughs> yeah. Ripped Maybe a little bit of that too. Maybe a little bit, maybe a little bit of that too. Uh, friends of convenience. I don't think I have any of those. Uh, same life stage friends. This would be good to, to, to find. It would be nice to find. More parents with kids and stuff. I, I mean, mean yeah. you're we we lucky. there's a lot of crossover. Yeah, there is for for us, but I mean the point I was making. I don't you. I know you've read that study or the. Yeah. It's crazy. Yeah, it's like the average thirty year old uh, man is reports like no friend. That's why we're at, we're at a historic time of loneliness yeah. right no. now in a digital age of connected. At that people are reporting back that they have hey, one I think it's or a big one though. No that last one you mentioned, the life stage friend, because it's Huge. like yeah, because. As much as you want to maintain friendships with, like, like, say, your single buddy or, like, the one that's, like, I don't know, doing something you did 10, 20 years ago, it's just... It doesn't work. It, it just doesn't work. And no. as much as you want to keep it going, uh, and, and so, yeah, I mean, I think that's that's one of them. I could think of a few now, like, at life stage, for, that, that's kind of where it shifted for me. I, I have to consider that. I mean, I mean, I like the category. It's a fun article. It's, it's cute to talk about. But I think that the most important thing, at least for me in my life, it was, and I remember this was a big hack in like my mid twenties when this light bulb went off, and that's the you're an average of the five people you spend the most time with, right? And actually, really evaluating that, like re truly, honestly, totally. going like, okay, if I were to break, if I were to pie chart my month by you know by the people I'm spending with, like, who who are they? And then looking at those five and going like, are the five of them living the life I want? Yeah. And if I can't say that about all five of them or any of them, 
I'm definitely need to reevaluate yep, this. Yep. And and then I I would I would teach this to to kids that were younger than me about how important this was. Be, oh, how do you have that breakup? You don't have to have a breakup. What you do is you just insert one of those ones that need to be in that circle, and eventually, just like how we do with the diet, you don't need to eliminate. Tell them to stop eating fast food. Just tell them to get their protein intake. Yep. Just tell them to go go make an effort to go hang out with those people that should be in your life. And naturally, what will happen is time will will fall apart for on the ones that you shouldn't be with. And you just keep doing that until now you can look at that five and go like, man, I I, I admire all five of those people in my life. And that's the type of circle you want. And then what happens, they eventually bring you all the way up to their level and then you're reevaluating again and going like, where am I spending my mm -hmm. my time with? And and again, you're not having to have a breakup conversation and break up with one of the five. You're just seeking out another person to come in. And that is like yeah. one of the fastest growth hacks in life. No, it's a great one. And you know, you mentioned how men are, are, are don't have a lot of friends. You know, it, it's true. Have you looked at the data on um, widowers versus widows? Mm -mm. So widowers of husband, right? Man, who is it? Okay. It's terrible. Men do very poorly when they lose a wife in comparison. And it's because- because women do everything. Because <laughs> it's because <laughs> we're, we're they lost. get them out of the house. Hey, bro, I've, wa I've watched two of my best friend's dads. He would say lost their wives and they're like, I don't know how to turn on the, uh, this. I don't know what to do. That's not, that's not I don't know where we pay this bill. Yeah. <laughs> like, where are my they're socks? Like, they're like, forget <laughs> this. It'd be easier if I was just dead. I'm out. No, no. That's, that's not what it says. That's true. I'm, I'm how do sure I warm this food? Hey, I'm pretty sure that plays a little bit of a role. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> What's the recipe for ice? <laughs> no, it's uh, it's because uh, men are terrible at making friends. Yeah. So they stay lonely. Yeah, they just yeah. stay lonely the whole time. But generally speaking, we. Do you think that's a you think that's a a, a sex trait or like an individual trait no, like a, characteristic? That's, that's gender. Really? Of course, there's every. Okay, by the way, I know there's let's always. Cover, let's, I know there's always exceptions. Yeah, let's cover everything we just said. When it comes down to the individual, everything can break down, right? But yeah. we're talking about general. But yeah, no, men are not nearly as social. Uh, and we don't yeah, make so. friends nearly as easily. And the older we get, the yeah. worse it is. It, men need like an outlet. They need yes. something where we're all doing something. And then by proxy, it's like, oh, you're going to show up next week. I'll see you there. Yep. And then it becomes a thing. Otherwise, it's like, oh, hey, you know, like, yeah. like, <laughs> now do you, like, if you want to get coffee or really? <laughs> stupid? No, dude. Yeah, I'm not going to do that. Dude. Now, Who okay, does that? Okay, so do you, I do that stuff. Justin, yes, yes, Justin. Right, Justin. I do that stuff hey, all the time. Yes, <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm talking so, the wrong Yes, guys to get coffee yeah. all the time. Well, yeah, I do. I absolutely do that stuff all the time. I literally just did that last week. Doug and I just did that too. Yeah, but you like talking that. business or something. You know what I'm saying? Well, I mean, that's how, that's how I that's how I justify it, right? Is I justify it as you want uh, a shoulder rub? As, <laughs> I justify it as evaluating my five my five always, right? And I'm open to having a coffee or having a lunch with almost anybody if I if I find you interesting and I, there's something do you I do can do evaluations learn. on your friends. I bet you have a file. I don't. Oh my I'm not God, that bro. bro. I'm I'm not see, come on, <laughs> come on. I I do up Adam, here, but not organized. Well, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. I'm not. I'm not you got a Justin I'd be, I'd be file, worried, a Sal yeah. file, a Doug file. Oh fuck! I moved down two slots. What's going on? You're not my Fab Five anymore. Uh, no, okay. So, do you think it's more nature or nurture? Do you oh, think that? Because because oh. I think that. So it's cross cultural. So it's probably uh, nature. You think all? You think nature? they've observed that? Yeah, yeah. In, in most cultures, because I definitely in terms think of what's that, modeled like growing well, up. Well, I so I think uh, you know we're we're teasing me that I'm that guy who would do that, right? But I also think that um, I had to. We talked about how much I oh, moved yeah. around and stuff like yeah. that. You had and to adapt that way. Yeah, yeah. so it, it forced like, and so something that was uncomfortable, mm -hmm. scary, and I didn't like as a kid became something that I had to adapt, figure out, and then later on in life became a strength of mine that I've learned to lean yeah. into as I've gotten older. So I don't necessarily think that it was like innate in me that I like well, to do that. Well, it's the same reason why for me, I have to have something, right? Like I always had like a sport or I had an activity yeah. or had a, a hobby, you know, and then I created a group of friends around that. You yeah. know, and so it's like, yeah, I think I think it starts early like that. I would imagine nothing, nothing too for for guys. Right? And this guy was in his room reading an encyclopedia, so it makes sense. <laughs> How why did you make it out? That's I, it makes yeah. sense why you would have. I a had a big time. family, actually. I got and then you had that right. Uh, you have a, a big you have a built in friend base. It was already yep. in there. Yeah. You love doing things by yep. yourself, so it's like yep. you didn't have to go do that. I yep. bet if you were in my situation, it would have been a totally different. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, I, I I can go out and talk to people and whatever. That's not a problem. You guys know me, probably. right? Right. But um, but yeah, I grew up with such a you big close family. I had my cousins, and so I never really. If, if I was in school and I like, so I didn't go out and have to go out of my way because, like, whatever. Right after school, I'm gonna go hang out with my cousin. 
So yeah, yeah. Does it doesn't matter. Right. That's why I think a lot of it is more nurture than you realize. I think sure it's oh, it, it's a lot nurture, of course. But there's a nature component because it, oh you, yeah, you look across. I'm not denying that. I'm yeah. not denying that. But I, I definitely think there's a lot of it like that. I, I okay. I believe it's a skill. I believe you can yeah. you can develop this. I think if For you sure. really care, and it's and you're at an age now where you don't give a shit. You're like <laughs> like I don't care. That, I've got that's the biggest reason too. Yeah, yes, because you don't just, give a shit. You sit in your ways and you're like, that's you know, right. I'm, I've I've entertained this before. I'm not interested. I know. Yeah. I know how talented both of you are. I know how capable both of you are. It's more of a I don't give a shit. I'm not going to because if you had to, stubborn old guys, you are. We're there. Uh, you would you would figure it out. You we, would we do cross it. that path. Dude. But you're like eh, whatever. <laughs> I've got my I've got my four friends that cross cross off se six of the seven uh, boxes. I've got my family in case yeah. I do that. Like, Why what do I, I need? need? Seven. I got three. Dude. Yeah, 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 yeah. Fine. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. We're, we're I'm, cool. I'm all right. Got, a lot of bonding happens too with men uh, through uh, struggle and challenge. I, some of the, the the closest friends you'll make, isn't it true? Yeah. But or ones that you went through. But, yeah, shit but with? I'll tell you something though. Those are, I, I had a lot of those. A lot of those are the unhealthy ones because, and, and hard to break because you you are attracted. You feel loyal. Remember the drama lust you thing feel that I loyal. talked about. It's like, yeah, there's drama lust. There's like you have what? this what? Hold on. drama lust. Remember when I said that to you before? Yeah, was that, like, was with God. that was when you're dating. It still works in it starts with men. It's like you're you're attracted to the drama. Oh. You don't subconsciously, you don't even realize yeah, yeah, it. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. you know, I mean, I my not one, lustful though. No, no, like, okay. oh, I mean, you're, you're lusting for the drama, not the person. I don't right? know, did you hear that, so, Justin? What yeah, he said? Yeah, 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 I did hear it. It doesn't make I was trying to see where it doesn't mean to lust. Neither example means lusting for the person, means lusting for the drama. You're you're attracted. I know what you mean. You're attracted to the drama, and it's a it's actually a bad thing, and yeah. you ha and you justify it because you went through that stuff with this person in your teenage years, yeah. and you have loyalty to them, and you think that's a good but the, but the loyalty you think it's a good attribute, but, but the loyalty doesn't go away. Like I bet you have friends from when you were a kid that's that you right. went through shit with. That's right. You probably don't talk to anymore. That's right. But if you something pick, came you up, pick right back up. Yeah. Something happened. You're there. Yeah, I, I consider them family. I have quite a few friends. Like that. And this is what I mean by the you don't have to break up or cut them off. You just they, I don't got time for them. Yeah. Because I got, I'm spending so much time with the other people yep, that are yep. bringing me up, or that are teaching me, or that uh -huh. are stretching me to grow and be a better. Speaking version. of stretching, did you have you tried out? Have you tried pushing the grams of protein from the Paleo Valley yet? The most that I've done is three scoops, which is how much is that? Oh, uh, I haven't gone beyond. It's only forty, I think. Can you do more than that with that, dude? It's so easy to digest, right? So, um, one of the challenges with. For with protein and protein intake is, uh, by the way, you can take as much protein as you want. Your body will assimilate it. The yeah. limiting factor is your digestion. Is this the whey protein? No, the, the no. This, bone, this bone is the bone broth. broth. The, the bone chocolate broth. one. The yeah. donut, the one that tastes like chocolate donut. Oh, yeah, I do like Which that. Which does sit Bro, on my stomach. Bro, I will throw 80 grams in a shake. And no scoops? problem. It's like six scoops? No 80? problem. No problem. I could digest it like like nothing. Bro, that, Do you put anything else in it? You no, know, water. If you had yeah. a shaker cup, that means like this much is water and then the rest is like uh, powder, dude. Uh, it's like you're chewing, you have to be chewing chocolate. No, no, point. it mixes all right. It mixes all right. It does mix good because it's thin. Right? But so you can, really... you, I can digest it no problem. I have no a push problem. beyond that. I'll try. You I'll... can make a massive, <clears throat> you could put a lot of protein with the bone broth and it's so non-reactive. I actually need to right now because my calories are low and I know I'm missing my protein intake and so I haven't, I got to get back on doing you're that. missing every you're missing yeah. them pretty yeah regularly. yeah yeah I'm, I'm low right now how's your running how's the running going? i'm not running huh i'm not, I'm not what? running <laughs> i thought you've been running yeah, or something I'm not running. Yeah. <laughs> I'm not running. But i still want you to become a get real serious about swimming dude I I, oh yeah now I, think, I think that was like i had a opportunity well, no that was really bad i do not need to be burning in a bunch of extra calories right now i'm already <laughs> low dude right now if i do something like that i will definitely Dwindle, like, I'll dwindle. never forget that day, man. You're, you're this, you're, this is when you were untapped potential. This is when dude. you were a pro physique competitor. So you're yeah, big, you're big old ass. Jumped in the pool and booked, man. You were, you were keeping up with those, those, uh, those college swimmers. Yeah, yeah. yeah. The two Arizona. I did not guys. expect that. Yeah, I, I didn't know I that sink, they were. Dude, I can't fucking swim. Oh, oh, I'm terrible. Yeah. I you know, I it's you know it, it's I guess it's neat to tell stories like that, but it's actually really frustrating for me to to know. You that. missed your opportunity. Yeah, like, you could have been I mean, a great medalist. I have like listen, like uh, that's cool and all that I do that, but I have no skill at all. Like I can't even do the flip turn very well. You're like, not even I, trained. Yeah, yeah that's I have, all it would take. Though. Yeah, I have no it's technique. You know, like if a you few had techniques, if you, you had the flip turn, yeah. you would have tied that guy. You know that right? Yeah, that's yeah. Where he took you. I just yeah, yeah. I I like it's just something that, and obviously what I know about body types, like I was built for that. I have this super tiny narrow waist, super wide back skinny legs like it's just and long and tall like Those it, Phelps ears dude you got all, <laughs> yes, yeah. I got good ears I told you I hit you back dude. <laughs> <laughs> you talking about my fat sips dude <laughs> 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 fucking fat Phelps ears dude you got nice fat sips bro yeah <laughs>
<laughs> Are we gonna say fat arms for a yeah, while? Yeah, I'm good. <laughs> oh, it just shit. sounds. I'm jealous now because I, I don't even fill my shirts out anymore. You, know, so, <laughs> yeah. you always know that, right? If I tease Justin, you know that Adam's feeling insecure about yeah, something. Yeah. Like that. He's, he's like my you're whipping, the target, my bro. whipping boy. You know what I'm saying? It's fine. Because <laughs> yeah. I'm not a pussy. Dude. I can handle it. Hey, people have been listening for a long time. They know that. Like, oh, Adam must be feeling insecure. He's yeah, picking on Justin again. I love it. <laughs> that's my favorite. I love. That's. Hey, can I tell you? That's one yeah. of my secret ways to bond. Is uh, is making fun like shit talk? I bond very well over. Well, shit you've talk. said that before that you believe it's an evolutionary trend. I right? think that so, but that, it just that we probably did that back in the if, days. If you, if we're going to battle, I got to know if this guy can handle a little bit of crossfire. Yeah, if he can't handle yeah. a joke, he's not going to be able to handle. He's going to cry in the bunker. Yeah, yeah. Like, he's going to be, be the weird. guy who rats me out when he's yeah. getting tortured for sure. He's no, going to be if he can't if handle. I, can't if handle I know you, I used to tell my staff if I know you, if I start like teasing you or making fun or whatever, it means I like you. Oh yeah. Otherwise, I won't. I won't make no jokes. I mean, I feel like that's that is like some common knowledge. You should know that. Like, if you're in a room full of dudes, and if you're not getting picked on, you're probably the one that's not liked. Yeah, yeah. I mean, <laughs> exactly. Like, yeah, you can't handle it. Yeah, so I we can't stay talk away from you. He's weak. <laughs> Yeah. Ooh, sorry. Didn't you say you had a friend uh, nickname? You guys gave him a nickname. Was it One Ball Pat? One, one ball, ball Pat. Pat. Yeah. Because he had yeah. one ball. He's, he had testicular cancer. Yeah, it's, it's bad, dude. That's great. That's so dude. Bad. I'm not proud of that. I don't, yeah, but you know what? Though? I would if I had if I lost. The he ball, wore it like a badge, though. dude. I'm telling you, if yeah. I, if that happened to me and you guys didn't call me that, I'd be I would hurt. be disappointed too. Yeah, yeah. I would be really I hurt. Really would. Disappointed. Like if something horrific happened to me, I'm telling yeah. you, this is true. It's all recorded. Yeah. Something horrific happened to me. Yes. Please make a nickname out of it Same. later on yeah. because I'll feel yeah. better about it. Right. I'll feel worse if yeah, otherwise it's awkward and uncomfortable. Yeah, like, dude. If yeah. I get like some ha something terrible happens, that's uh, a good measure. If you've never had like like a few good nicknames, like you should question yourself. Yeah. You're probably not like. Yeah, yeah. Probably, yeah. People probably don't like you that much. <laughs> <laughs> you know, we you just, made, just made a bunch of people insecure. You guys right must really like me. Hey, yeah. <laughs> check wow, yourself. You guys love me so much. Yeah, you guys yeah. talk shit to me. All yeah. Uh, we love Doug the that most. That beak is real. All right, wrap out. this up. Ah, come on. Wrap this up, beak yeah. face. Let's All go. Right. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I don't have a beak. Peck your way through this. Let's do this. Oh, no, Where did that come it from? Sounds <laughs> hey, it's always as good as fat arms. Hey, you're, you're, you're a jerk. Listen, hey, the other night. The it's other night, not always accurate, but it <laughs> fucking sticks. The other day, I was looking in the mirror and trying to look sideways. Asking your wife. I did. Honey, do I? Come on, tell me. You tell me, right? Oh, babe, is my face pointing? Like, what's going on? You should see your silhouette, dude. I can't, dude. I tried. Shout and out. Even very angular. Like, like <laughs> all right, all right. All right, so the shout out, really, really good coach, really good trainer. Um, she's heading our coaches that have gone through our course. She's now working with Mind Pump. We love her. She's written some content for us, which, by the way, some of the best – some of the best content. She's only seen. been with us for a few months, and she's killing Exceptional. it. Exceptional. Um, her, you can follow her on Instagram. It's Ann Svogun. So A N N S V O G U N. Great content. Check her out. Make, give her a follow. If you lift weights and you're a guy, it's hard to find nice looking formal wear, especially suits. It's insane. You have to get everything tailored. Well, there's a company called State and Liberty. I buy stuff off the rack, and it fits incredibly well. Their stuff is all designed for guys who lift weights, guys who work out, guys who are athletic. Great looking clothes. They feel good and they fit incredibly. Go check them out. Go to mpstateandliberty.com and you'll get an automatic discount on that link. All right, here comes the show. Our first caller is Kevin from Canada. What's up, Kevin? What's happening? How you doing? What up? Hey, guys, just crushed the workout. Get my day going. Excellent. Right on. Excellent. How can we help you? Get it. Okay, so recently uh, I'm super active, 51 year old. I do jujitsu, strength training. Uh, just started doing a little more hit with uh, Airdyne bike, and focusing on um, calorie targets and macro targets, and trying to do so in a intermittent fasting window of about eight hours per day. And I would typically use shakes or you know protein bars or other supplements to try and get at least 200 grams of protein a day. I recently heard or read that your body can't necessarily absorb protein from supplements as it uh, efficiently as it moves through your digestive tract. And I've been listening to the show for a long time, and I've actually never heard you guys bring that up. So fired off the question to you guys, because I thought you probably have some awareness around that topic. Yeah. Well, before I answer that, Kevin, where'd you read that? I'd like to know where you read that. So... I heard, it was a locker room discussion that I overheard, and then I Googled it, um, and I actually found a study. I don't know how credible the study was, but it um, spoke to 
the speed at which liquid, like a protein shake, actually moves through your digestive tract, as well as your digest digestive tract's ability to absorb protein over the same amount of time. And that study indicated that you maybe get 10 to 15 grams of protein. So if you have a 50 gram shake, you're only really absorbing 10 to 15 no. grams because the liquid goes through your system that fast. No, no, no. That's not what the study... So what you looked at... Uh, um, so the reason why I want to know where you got that from is I thought you might have got it from an advertisement for a supplement. Mm -hmm. um, so first, to be just quick, um, total bullshit. It, it, it doesn't matter. But the study you read is talking about how quickly you absorb protein within a particular time window. But all the protein you consume gets utilized. It, 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 your body uses it all. The limiting factor is your digestion. So you can eat as much protein as you want in a sitting so long as it doesn't cause digestive distress. Like obviously if you eat beyond what you can tolerate, you're not going to feel good. You might give yourself gastro issues or might, maybe even throw up. That would be, <laughs> that would mean that you're not utilizing all the protein, <clears throat> but no, this is total Total baloney. Uh, you take as much protein as you want. If you digest it fine, doesn't give you uh, you know gastro distress. It, it doesn't matter. It doesn't. It literally doesn't matter. Guy your size, you could probably have seventy grams of protein and probably feel okay. Depending now, what, on how, what, how you feel. what if that causes him to say have the shits right afterwards every time he does seventy grams? Then you would do less. I know, but my point is that is he at that point is he not absorbing all 70 grams or is he still absorbing it he's just not getting to i mean get all the maximum benefits of it i mean it depends on how bad the gastro distress is uh however um because there's lots of obese people with uh diarrhea uh but the 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 main issue to come, to focus on would be the gastro distress itself the inflammation and the um the issues that that causes in your body so even if you did absorb every gram of protein but you're constantly giving yourself Lots of inflammation, and if your goal is to improve athletic performance and build muscle and all that stuff, well, you're shooting yourself in the foot. But there is no there is no limit other than what you can tolerate and what feels good or okay for you. The other question I have for you is, is why are you eating in a time window? What's the what's the goal behind that? I find it's uh, it's just more efficient in my day, and I do feel better when I go through a majority of my day fasted. Okay, that's fine. Yeah, you're good. That's a good reason. Yeah. Could, could I just bring up uh, the one thing that the study, what, whether the study is credible or not, it, it may be complete bullshit, but one thing they did measure was uh, nitrogen levels in urine of the, the subjects. And they found that higher nitrogen levels were found in those target or those individuals that took higher levels of protein. Yep. That's going to happen throughout the day too. So a person who consumes more protein will potentially have more of that in their urine than somebody who consumes less protein. Uh, you're looking at, you're measuring it for the whole day, not just within that hour or whatever. So if you consume a big bolus of protein, you'll have more in a shorter period of time. If you spread it out throughout the whole day, uh, then the amount is going to be the same or very similar um, throughout the whole day when you add it up. It's like the whole like eating small meals versus eating large meals. Um, argument. There really is no benefit other than convenience right. and tolerance. Otherwise, yeah, there's it, it doesn't matter. And also, look, you know, Kevin, from an evolutionary standpoint, this makes zero sense. You, you, we definitely, for most of human history, didn't hunt an animal and eat 20 grams of protein from it and then be like, We're, I'll wait no. two more hours before. <laughs> Wasn't there another study about that? That like you'd even you utilize protein uh, like longer than we even anticipated. Yeah, I mean yeah, that just came, like that recently the staying power was, that recently just came out, <laughs> but it, it all points to the fact that it's it's not. It used, I used to say it's splitting hairs, but now I just say there's not. You're not even splitting hairs. It doesn't make any difference. Awesome. Well, I knew I came to the source. Thanks, guys. Yeah, yeah, you got course, it, man. man Thanks man. for calling in, brother. Take care. That 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 bro, uh, science stuff still lingers, but the reason why it lingers. Is not they are inaccurate when they communicate it that way. Yeah, that that's the that, okay. The problem I have with it is not so much because uh, there's there's some. I, I definitely think that there is some value to you eating whole foods versus shakes and getting all your protein that way. Yeah, yeah. And I I've always had this issue where if I if I have a really high protein shake, let's say seventy to ninety grams of protein. I definitely it it messes up my digestion. I, yeah. I'm on the toilet normally right afterwards, and that can't 
possibly be as valuable as the steak that I had that was 70 grams of protein with the rice because that sits with me perfectly. Yeah. So there's got to be something happening. It might be the protein source because does that happen to you with the uh, like the Paleo Valley? Uh, so that's a good, chocolate that's a good question because um, I don't know if I've tested as high as 70 before and you and you might be right like it's uh, the dairy right yeah because I can't do like uh, for somebody who has a mild dairy intolerance it, like imagine eating 70 grams of dairy like whole food dairy yeah would that cause the same issue po probably um, now I'm not gonna say that you know pre-digested you know protein powder is is equivalent to food I think food's superior for a lot of different reasons. And for probably reasons that we're not all sure, too. 100%. I yeah. mean, we- 100%. It, that's the part why I'm always like cautious to tell someone this, because yeah. I don't want to green light somebody like, go get all your protein, you know, a 100 gram shake. In, no. If no. you think that's better. Like, no. And, and I've told you this story before of when I did, like when I was competing and I, I controlled a whole comp or a whole uh, prep to another prep where one, I allowed all the shakes and bars I wanted. The other one was like pure whole foods. And there was a clear difference in my results. Now, of course. it wasn't the difference of me not losing 10 pounds of body fat. And the other one, I had 10 more. It wasn't crazy. It was splitting hair difference, but it definitely was different. Yeah. You know, it felt different it also changed my my cravings and, and behaviors around food and stuff like that so there's a there's yeah a whole, whole food's gonna be the best uh, yeah. across the board for reasons we know and, and those that we don't know but you know his question was about how much you absorb yeah and that's just uh that's a lot of marketing and in the bro science and the bro science bodybuilders saw value from dividing the protein up but it wasn't because their body couldn't absorb it or what it was because they're eating yeah. a lot of food and a lot yeah. of protein that, that's the real issue. Yeah, if you're eating 4,500 calories a day, try eating three meals yeah. to equal 4,500 calories versus eating six meals. Well, right? you remember that was always my argument yeah. when we first started yeah. the show because yeah. I was in the middle of that and we were obviously, that was one of the, the myths that we came after, right? The yeah. whole idea that you need to break up these meals. And then I would always kind of counter the point that, yeah, but keep in mind, you have a guy like me who's trying to eat 4,500 calories and get 230 totally. grams of protein. It's like you try doing that in two meals and and try doing that in two meals and not have digestive issues. Of course. You know, you try and eat 150 yeah. grams in one yeah. sitting yeah. and Incredibly very few people. Yeah, very few people will not it's the be on the toilet between, after that. Yeah, it's the difference between three 1,500 calorie meals or six, you know, 750 calorie meals. That's why bodybuilders do it. It's not the you know absorption or this you know the science behind it, whatever. Now the average person typically is fine. Most people don't aren't able to consume or, or shouldn't consume forty five hundred calories. So this you know splitting up meals is really about up, up to personal preference. Next caller is Tanya from Canada. Hi Tanya. Hi guys. How you doing? How Morning. are you? Good. Good. How can we help you? I'm very happy to be here. Forget about rock stars. I'm talking to the mind pump guys. Uh, <laughs> uh, uh, yeah. So I had a question to for you today about mobility. Uh, I'm someone who, like most people, will hold like stress in their shoulders and their neck. For me, it's all in the hips. Uh, so forever, like I've always felt that I was tighter in the hips. But over a year ago, well, almost a year ago, I took on a new. Uh, professional challenge and now I can see that my body is starting to talk even more uh, loudly to me uh, so what was usually just you know tightness in my hips after coming back from a two weeks uh, holiday and you know coming back to my uh, my desk job just from sitting you know my my day-to-day -day job I could feel that it's not pain that I would feel let's say in my left uh, butt cheek but more like a numbing sensation uh, and irradiates even like down to my hamstrings. So I know like I didn't expect to get uh, with you guys on the call like so soon after sending my email. So I already went ahead on Monday. I bought uh, Pro uh, MindPop Prime so that I could start with the mobility drills. But I just want to make sure beyond doing, you know, the stretching and the priming, I want to get to the root source of like, why is it about my left side of my body that seems to give give me so much uh, challenges. That's good. And have you know you noticed it's connected to stress? Um yeah because sometimes like let's say I'm having a stressful day sometimes I'll have to like I'll I'll get in tune with my body and I'm like oh wh why am I keeping myself like so mm -hmm. so tense you know in the mm -hmm. in the hip area. So there's probably a physiological like maybe I just have a um a tendency to be more stressed in that area, but I feel that it's aggravated by uh, by stress. What what is the uh, the new sport or thing that you're doing? Tell me about what what you started doing. Okay. okay, so because I knew that I was having a very stressful year, I've actually in the last 
I would say like in the last two months decided to really like lower the intensity of my workouts. I'm currently on week two, phase two of MAPS 15 advanced. So I'm doing that with, um, with dumbbells at home. So I don't think that as far as like movement patterns, things like that, nothing new is happening physiologically that would create more, uh, more tension. Okay. Oh, I thought I was so totally misunderstood you. I thought you were at the beginning. I thought you said that you started doing something new, like you were doing like a sport. Oh no, or like running or no, over year, like career wise, like oh. my stress bucket in the last oh, year has been very got it. like okay, got getting it. Uh, got getting it. fuller uh, by, yeah. by every month. You know. Got so it, I'm I'm pretty sure what you're feeling is is a nerve pain, not muscle pain, caused by tightness, and probably what's known as the piriformis That's exactly what muscle. It is. So pir. So you can look up piriformis syndrome, uh, and this muscle sits right on the sciatica nerve. And so when it's yeah, tight, that's... yeah. And so when it's tight, the sciatica nerve, um, you, you'll feel is numbness yeah, or burning, numb. or coldness. Typically goes down the leg. Pigeon pose is a really good stretch for that. Uh, even yeah. better, we'd it's be one to, of my favorites. Yes, one of, even better would be to to sit in a cross legged position yeah. like this mm -hmm. on a foam roller. And then lean on a foam roller. Okay. Yes, and then you lean on the butt cheek. Uh, that that's that you that hurts. And then you roll we'll slowly do down the foam. Ball get crazy. Yeah. Oh, lacrosse ball is gonna be I nasty. Did a, for that. I did a, I did a YouTube video on this. Yeah. I'm trying to remember what the title and, was. And you yeah, I've been like this week at work. That's what I've been trying to do. Like every because I know like you're all you guys are always talking about like frequency over yeah. like intensity with mobility. So I'll do like this figure four as I'm sitting at my desk. Yes try and like stretch it up throughout the day. Yes. Mm -hmm. So that stretch right there, you sit on a foam roller like that, yeah. then yeah. lean on the side that's bothering you and roll okay. up and down the foam roller until you feel it uh, on the tight spot. And it'll be where the pir where the piriformis muscle is. You can look that up so you can see where it's at. And then when you find that muscle, sit on it and wait for it to dissipate. It's a very, very fast remedy. And you'll notice tension release probably immediately and practicing it over time. And then you want to mobilize it. That's right. That's yeah. right. And then 90-90 and you know, strength training will help. There's probably a physiological muscle imbalance. But tightness, like you're describing, although now you have some physiological stuff going on, the root cause is typically emotional or psychological. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I don't without getting into too much detail, you know, whenever we're tight due to stress. What your body's doing is it's putting you in what's known as a protective position. And, and typically, we want to protect our, our vital organs. So when somebody's very stressed, what you tend to see is this closed-off posture. Now, if you feel tightness in your hips, your body feels for some reason that your hip area needs to be protected. Sometimes that's due to trauma. Sometimes that's due to whatever. But for whatever reason, your body is protecting your pelvis area. So yeah, and probably the, all related also to like the gut issues that might be like popping up at the same time, you know, like we, how we feel nervous. Sometimes we'll feel it in our stomach and absolutely, our digestion. Absolutely. All related. Oh, yeah. So what I'll recommend to you, and again, you don't have to go into de detail, but if there are any events in your, in your past that affected the pelvic area, you would want to revisit that and also practice belly breathing. So deep diaphragmatic breathing um, yeah. tends to help alleviate tension in the hip area. Um, and the fact that you have gut issues along with it tells me that, yeah, there, it's, it's probably something like that. But then, yeah, yeah, yeah. The, the roll foam roller, pigeon, pigeon strength training. 90-90s, like mobilizing left yeah. to right. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, no, my husband tells me I need to just, you know, chill the F out. But uh, <laughs> <laughs> when you... <laughs> Easier said than done. When you right? do the yeah. nine, when you do the ninety nineties, do you do uh, the progressions to it where you lift, try to lift your back heel up off the ground? Have you tried to do that? I, I haven't done it this week, but I had done a few times your um, like your YouTube the, the seminar yeah. Yeah. on the um, on Prime, and I think you, you were doing it this way in the uh, in yeah. the, the video. So I was I the times that I did practice it in the past, I would do it like that. So yeah, pay attention to the discrepancy between the left and right. I have a, a, a yeah sneaky suspicion you're going to notice a big difference on one side or the other. You, you pro and a lot of times the root cause of this, you might have the stress, all those things are compounding, but it's normally weakness and instability in the hips. Yeah. And normally it's going to be one yeah. side more than the other. And so that will be, that will kind of point you in the direction of where the culprit is, right? So you're going to get on one side and get in your 90-90 and let's say the right leg, you can lift the heel off the ground, say 12 inches. And then you're going to go to the left leg and all of a sudden yeah. it's like you can barely get it off the ground or, you know, or yeah. not at all. Like, or there, or there'll be a major discrepancy that'll normally point you in an area that that hip 
is weaker and unstable, and that's why it's kind of seizing up and tightening in that area. Because stress just exaggerates. That's right, and, and points it out. Like, right, here, here's an area of focus. But those yeah, and all the left always seems to be where, like, even with like I did the different zone tests last night just to like know where I stood uh, before talking to you guys. And like, okay, zone wall, the the zone one, like, or is it zone two? Like when you have your shoulders up the wall, like, yeah, zone one, but zone hold one. the position. But I could feel like, like my left shoulder was definitely screaming more than my my mm -hmm. right one. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, so what so, you'll yeah. so what you'll notice on the body too is like when you have like let's say uh, which you could probably zigzag it backwards and figure out what hip it is without even doing that. So the body will do this on the kinetic chain. It'll go like if I have a left ankle, it'll go to right knee, then right knee go to left hip, left hip will go to right low back, right low back will go to upper left yeah. shoulder area. So kind of ping pong like that, right? So, mm -hmm. so there's, so you could probably follow it all the way down. And those are the areas where you're going to have issues all the way down the body. Yeah. No. Quick question also with the foam rolling, because I know that in prime, you, you always suggest the foam rolling at the end of the workout. Now, if I have this crazy tightness, is should it be something that I do before I yep. do my actual yes. workout? Yeah. Yep. Yes. You could do it before. Yeah. This yep. is an exception. I would do, I would do it before and after, yeah. and I would also do it on off days or whenever you feel the tightness, just have a little short foam roller and get in that figure four position and, you know, press on the piriformis and hold that position till you feel a little bit of relief. Yeah. Anytime there's like tight restricted movement, that's where we want to address that before. So we, we want to be able to unlock it so you can work on the movement patterns to reestablish a better condition. That's the key though. What he just said is the, the working on afterwards, right? So the, that's going to give you temporary relief. We're not yeah. solving anything though. Right. So all we're doing is giving temporary relief to then go in to do the work. So the, the definite follow up of the 90 90s with the heel lift and stuff that you want to do that after you do the foam roll. So don't just foam roll. Yeah. Yeah. And it's the beauty of math 15, right? Because the, the workouts takes like such a short time. Like I don't mind. Yeah, no, it's a great thing. That extra time. Very on good the, point. Uh, yeah. This is a, this is a, this is a great way, by the way, for the listeners to use maps 15. I love like, this is odd. when you have somebody who's got a, something going on and it's uh, to the place where it's causing lots of discomfort and issues that becomes a priority. If I'm a trainer, I'm going to focus mostly on that. Hey, we'll still do some working out and you're going to still be able to build muscle. And, but the focus is let's address this. Let's fix that. Let's work on that as your priority. And then we'll do one or two exercises after that every single day after your workout. And that's a great way to use MAPS 15. Yeah. And get it worked out before I want, like, let's say my situation changes and I want to crank back the intensity. Like I want to make sure that this is all that's right. like, behind me and taken care of. That's right. You, awesome. uh, you, you know, uh, we, we didn't give you anything, but I'd love to give you Prime Pro also, because I think that will also benefit you since you're going down this rabbit hole of... Uh, oh, awesome. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So let us let us send you Prime Pro. Awesome. Uh, Thank you so much. Compliment It compliments Prime really well. Oh, perfect. Thank you so much. It's very generous of you. Yep. Thank you. Thanks for calling in. <laughs> Have a great day, guys. You, you got it. One. You know, there's a lot of things that can cause um, movement pattern mm -hmm. issues or imbalances, injury or repetitive movement, emotional distress can do this as well. That's always the elusive one. That's it's the one. So true. But it happens. It, well, I mean, what you find, because tension in the hips is not common from emotional stress or distress, no. but it is if you were traumatized in that area. And um, I've, I've worked with people like this. I had this, I remember I had this young, young lady, this young lady, uh, this very similar. And I remember my, our body work specialist worked on her and she cried and revealed that she had been um, assaulted at one point. And so what happens when she feels stress is for this woman, this young lady, she would tighten up her pelvic area, including her hips and her, you know, her diaphragm. And even the way she walked would change and it would cause tightness and that would cause dysfunction. So, um, if, you know, if you're noticing tight, cause your body's trying to protect you, it's protecting you from something, either a weakness or fear. Uh, many times, so and that what's tough, why it's so elusive is it's subconscious, right? Yeah. You That's right. You're, she's not like actively going like, oh, I need to tense up that area. No, no, it's no, a, no. it's know, automatic. It's not yeah. obvious, yeah. right? Maps bands is half off, and Maps forty plus is also half off. If you're interested, just click on the link at the top of the description below. Our next caller is Dana from Ohio. Hi, Dana. How can we help Hi. you? Hi. How are you? Hi, I'm good. How are you? I'm good. good. Hey, um, thank you so much for taking the time to talk to me today. I'm like, uh, just, I don't even know what to say. <laughs> <laughs> well, um, <laughs> how can we help you? So, um, I am 44 years old. I'm a mom of three, um, and I own and operate a small business here in Ohio. Um, I'm five foot seven and a half and 174 pounds. Um, 
I've pretty much struggled with my weight since I've been like 10 years old. It's always been a, a huge issue for me. Um, so when I turned 40, I really wanted to kind of start taking care of myself for my kids and just longevity. Um, in October 2021, I got my first gym membership um, and I began lifting regularly at four or five times a week. Um, I've always I, like I've always wanted to build muscle, but I've always been focused on losing weight. Um, and so all of that is just so confusing uh, to me. Um, I've heard you guys talk about like a lean bulk. Um, and that that's interesting because I don't I, I maybe I think that's what I need to do. Um, and I've heard you guys talk about like getting stronger first and then doing the cut. Um, so I guess I'm just not sure where to start. Um, I want to build muscle. I don't want to gain a bunch of weight just because I'm already technically overweight. Um, so do you guys have any advice on where I could start? How long do you stay in a bulk? Um, and when when do you know uh, like how to when to cut, I guess? Yeah, yeah, great, great, great question. question, and a, would be a fun client to take. This totally, is a, sure. this is <laughs> this is a, a really cool place in your life to be, and uh, absolutely, you're on the right track of the question you're asking. That's exactly what we would do with you: is we would reverse diet, we would uh, and and build muscle, and I probably would just because you 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 made the point about like oh I don't want to put any weight on. I'd probably not let you weigh yourself because mm -hmm. I wouldn't want you to. I would okay. say, yeah, w our goal would be around increasing our caloric intake, hitting our protein intake consistently and building muscle and getting stronger. And I, and I don't really care initially what the scale says. I want to go off of how you, how you feel and look, and we're going to, we're going to check in with that every few weeks. And, you know, if we do, if we do it correctly, uh, you will continue to improve that. You'll see strength go up. Uh, you'll see your body start to firm up. You'll feel tighter. You'll look better. Like you'll start to see all those things. You'll see all kinds of positive things happening to your body. Now, the, what will happen to somebody like you if you do weigh yourself is that could freak you out. Like, oh my God, three pounds went up. Yet, if you didn't even pay attention to that and you were objective and said, oh, you know what? Like, I look better. I feel better. And you didn't know what the scale said. You would probably do good and stay the course. It a lot of times will screw people up when they first get started in this position because they don't want to go up and their ultimate goal is to yeah. lose weight. And then they see that fluctuating, even though they're doing a great job. Are you running any of our MAPS programs currently? I just got muscle mommy. Love it. Perfect. Um, Perfect. Do you know do you yeah. know how many do you know how many calories that you're eating a day or what your macros look like? Yeah, I'm at about like 1500 right now okay. a day. Okay. Yeah, so um, for sure for sure reverse diet you because here's the conundrum, Dana, is that at 1500 calories if we want if you wanted to lose weight from here, you would have to go down from 1500 calories. Um, and then you'd be in an unsustainable place, right? Because where are you going to go from there? A thousand calories, and then what happens when you hit your goal? Like, uh oh, now I'm stuck, you know, at a thousand calories. So what a reverse diet attempts to do, and oftentimes successfully does, is it speeds up your metabolism. So the other question you had was, how do I know when to cut? When we can get your calories to a place to where you can go down from and be sustainable. So let, if we could, let's say we maintain your body weight roughly where you're at, but with more muscle, because what will happen is you'll probably stay right around the same body weight if you were to weigh yourself, although I agree with Adam, I don't think you should. And But you would build some muscle, probably lose a little bit of body fat, but your metabolism would start to really boost and speed up. And then when we got you eating 23, 24, 2,500 calories without really gaining any weight, then we're like, cool, let's cut from here. Now you can go from 2,500 calories down to 1800 calories and you get lean and then your maintenance is around 2000 calories. In other words, at the end of this, if you do this right, you could be in a place where you're eating more than you are now, but lean. Yeah. With the body you want. That's I mean, right. And this is, wow. yeah, you're, this is a, you have a place with your, with your height, you could easily get up to 2,500 to 3,000. That sounds crazy probably. Yeah, I do it all the time. Eating 2,500 <laughs> to three. But this is this is why I said right away, I was like, oh, this would be a fun client because you, you broke down your height, where you are experience-wise. I'm like, I would blow your mind. I would literally take you on this journey. And when we were done in six to eight months, you'd be like, I can't believe this, Adam. I'm eating double, three times the food I ever had, and I'm leaner than I've ever been. That is our goal. Our goal is yeah. can we slowly increase calories over time and I don't want to see much movement quite on the scale yet. That'll come, 
we'll get to the point where you you decide that you want to but right now it's like get strong in the gym the the probably the one of the biggest hurdles aside from the scale when i said will be consistently hitting your protein intake so my clients okay. like you in your position yep. that uh when we're doing this the two biggest hurdles one getting in their own head with the weight and scale thing so that's why we throw that shit out two is tracking and consistently hitting protein day in and day out. If you know you're going to be good following the program, you've got the program laid out for you, so you ain't got to worry about that. Just follow as it's laid out and consistently okay. don't miss that protein intake. Just do that. And and we're going to just bump your calories a little bit. So if you're eating 1,500 right now, I'd probably start you at like 1,800. And then we would hang there for a couple weeks. What I should see or hear from you is I'm getting stronger and I'm getting hungrier. And that's my first sign of like, oh, this is a good sign. You're getting hungry. You're getting stronger. Let's go ahead and bump another 200 calories up. And we're going to play that game, you know, every two to three weeks, slowly increasing that and trying to get strong in the gym and then just watch what happens and then be patient, but consistent and be consistent with the protein intake. Now, are you going to be working with a coach at all to help you with the nutrition aspect? No. Okay. If you can, that would be a good idea. Let's put it in the forum. Yeah. Okay. But at the very least, we'll put you in our forum. But it would be good to work with a coach who understands reverse dieting that can kind of walk you through this. If you don't, the the, the simple, not, not quite as um, specific or, you know, maybe not even as quite as effective, but easy way to do it on your own would be just to hit your protein targets. And someone like you, I would have you hit 130 grams minimum a day. Minimum. And, and the way you would do it is breakfast, lunch, and dinner. You hit your 45 grams of protein uh, first. 45, eat, eat that first. And then if you're hungry and you want more of whatever else, go for it. But hit the protein first. That'll take care of a lot of this. And then get strong in the gym. That's the only thing I want you to pay attention to is how, how, how strong am I getting in the gym? If you're getting stronger, your metabolism is speeding up. Yep. So that's, that's, they're, they're both connected. And Muscle Mommy is a perfect program for that. And, and I would love, since we're going to put you in the forum for free, I'd love for you to, if you don't get a personal trainer especially, okay? Even if you do, I'd still like to hear from you. But if you if you don't get a trainer, I definitely would love to hear an update from you at least once a month. Just check in with us okay. on the forum. Let us know what you're feeling, what you notice, where your kind of calories are currently at, and allow us to kind of help guide you through that process. Right. Um, because again, the, the two biggest things getting in your own head and getting in, in your own way, consistently hitting protein intake. So let's, let's make that our first real goal here. And then, and then we'll go from there. But I, I feel really confident, um, that where we can get you in the next six months is, is going to blow your mind as far as eating and how you feel and how you look. Just totally. watch. Awesome. Yes. I love it. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Perfect. Super exciting. We'll send that over. Right. I'll, I'll have Doug uh, send you access to, to get in there get in there and say hi. And then, uh, and you know, okay. we, we have our, our, our head trainers in there, Kyle too. So if you end up wanting to do like, he does online coaching, if he has some availability, you can, uh, reach out to him idea. and, uh, uh, and see if he's got availability. If not, then like I said, we'll, we'll do our best to help you along the way. All right. Thank you so much. All right. Yeah, you got it. Right. Thank you. A lot. I mean, it's uh common, it's a very common. Client I love a client like this. Yeah. I love a client like this. Who this is you know, relatively new to the journey. Yeah. You know, she's got a lot of height, so we got a lot of right. I got a lot of weight to work with right. as far as she's like muscle we can put on that body. Struggled and frame. with weight for a long time. Yes, she's she's gotten her metabolism to slow down through probably years of on off dieting. Uh, she'll respond great mm -hmm. and and it'll blow her mind. I love it because at the end of it, they're always like, I can't even believe this is yes. happening. That's why you got to throw the scale away though, because this is that'll be like the that'll yep. be the kryptonite of this journey totally. right here is you know freaking out because you don't want to see that weight go up any more than of what course. you're currently at. And you're doing a great job, and yet you see that, and you go, "Oh God!" And you reverse course back to your 1,500 calories, and then you add cardio in there, totally. and you're just like, "Oh God, no!" Our next caller is Grail from Wisconsin. This what's up, an, man? This is an update. Hey, what's up, buddy? How you doing, guys? How you Good. Doing, How man? can we help you? Um, so I started off my journey like I feel like a lot of people have. I started off running anabolic, um, gung ho on calories, um, really poor lifting. Um, technique, you know, not, not really putting much technique in it. And, uh, I got fat, <laughs> I got really fat and, uh, my sleeping was poor and my body was beat up and I was overtraining. Cause of course, like everybody, I started the three day a week, you know, and then kind of fell back into like ego lifting. So, you know, I had to make a change cause I, I was just being real. It, it just wasn't working. Um, I thought I knew how to work out. I thought I was doing the right stuff. Um, so I, I switched it up, um, 
And I said, all I'm going to do is I'm going to eat whole food. You know, I'm going to run a cut, um, but I'm not going to really worry too much with calories. I try to listen to you guys as much as possible. So I just cut out junk. And I started, you know, sh shedding weight fast, you know. Um, I think the first month I lost like 12 pounds, which is, you know, a lot of water too. But um, my, my calories started getting down there, you know, and I'm not really realizing that I have, because I work 10 hours a day hard. I'm not realizing that I don't want to move no more. You know, I'm trying to push it to like 1,900 calories. And I, I felt at the time when I emailed you guys, I was like, I was kind of freaking out. So I'm like, I made such progress and I didn't know where to go. But um, I had to make a clutch decision. So I'm like, I have a binge eating problem. So what I, I felt myself wanting to eat like a lot of sweets and a lot of like hungry all the time. So like, I, I feel like I need to bulk. So I'm like, this time I'm not going to bulk heavy. I'm going to start light. I'm going to, um, and and switch up how I train, you know. So I ran I ran a bulk. Um, I think in eight weeks I put on ten pounds total. Um, I the the little test said like four pounds of muscle and the rest of the water, you know, and fat. So that's about where I'm at. And then I, I I ran a cut again. Um, but not an extreme cut. I'm trying to lose weight as slow as possible. Um, I'm running anabolic again, but I'm only doing two days a week with all my triggers. Um, and I try to do mobility too, because I, I work really hard and I'm not really good at sleeping and I know them are stress factors along with dieting. So I'm really trying to scale it back in the gym and just do stuff that's good for me. I'm um, worried about myself. You know, I listen to you guys about, about taking care of yourself instead of, you know, the aesthetic aspect. So that's about where I'm at. Um, it was crazy. My first, uh, my first week, I dropped almost like ten pounds of water after stop eating my bulking because I was eating like three hundred, like thirty five hundred calories a day, which um, I understand what you guys say, but it's hard about eating so much because it, it really demolished my appetite, which kind of got negative because I started not wanting to eat fruit and stuff. Like I wanted to start kind of cheat my way to thirty five hundred calories, and that's why I was like, yeah, I gotta. You know, when you're stuffing yourself, it's, it's time to go the opposite direction. So now I'm trying to lose it slowly. I'm I'm uh, sticking like the 24 to 27 range, not being real hard on myself. Just kind of slowly cutting into a healthy weight. And I would like to bulk again, but I would just like to get probably to a healthier weight. Okay. So Grail, um, we we can make this a lot easier than than yes. you're making it right now. Yes, yes. yes. Uh, how tall are you? I am about five eight. Five eight. Okay. Here's what I want you to do. Uh, I want you to eat 180 grams of protein a day, and yep. I want you to stick to whole natural foods, and you're done. Gotcha. You're done. Yeah, don't, don't worry about anything else. Yeah. But but eat when you're eat when you're hungry. That's it. And, and don't but, stop counting calories. Hit 180 protein. Eat it first in your meals. So eat it first. Yep. If you're still hungry, stick to whole foods and keep eating until you're satisfied. Now, don't eat until you're stuffed. There's a difference. Eat until yeah. you're satisfied, and then you're done. Stop counting calories. 180 mm -hmm. grams of protein every day from whole natural foods. Yeah. Eat it first. The rest, listen to your appetite. Whole natural foods. Focus on getting strong. Follow MAPS Anabolic, and you're golden. Yeah. The, the, the other thing is your sleep, which we can talk about. Um, do you take a lot of caffeine? Do you drink alcohol? Is there anything that could be influencing or affecting your sleep? So I've had sleep problems my whole life. Um, what I've done is to lower my caffeine intake, um, have a regular schedule, um, and trying to clean up my sleep hygiene. Unfortunately, I work second shift, so I feel like my circadian rhythm's kind of messed up because yeah. I just wake. Mm -hmm. My problem is I wake up early. Um, so I started using maybe like melatonin. I was on medication, but I went off my medication. I'm trying to like do things the natural way. Um. My sleep, it it's rough having like six hours a night. Yeah, like maybe five. It it wears on you so bad, it's and then my factor. cravings go up. Yeah, really bad for food. Mm -hmm. Even my posture when I'm tired, my posture everything. Like, yeah, yeah. I'm so tired, yeah. you know. What were you, were you so, on? Were you on sleep medication? I started it, but it 
it just made me black out. You know, Justin, when you said about drinking NyQuil and how it you just black out, you get sleep, but you're not <laughs> sleeping well. Yeah, yeah. I did see That's that, how yes. I felt about that. Like, it's blacking me out, but this shit's making me feel like crap. Yeah, yeah. yeah so, yeah, yeah. No, okay. you, don't, you don't want that. I need to find the core. I need to find the core root problems of things. Well, yeah. With so my eating, with my I would sleep. avoid. So the most common offenders are caffeine, alcohol. Uh, those are the most common ones. With your schedule, and with my ADHD, I, they had me on stimulant medication, oh, which I've been yeah. on my whole life. Which I just I went off that also. Okay, so so what you want to do, obviously, what you want to do is prioritize the sleep and then get naps um, whenever you can, especially when you have the second shift. But with MAPS yeah. Anabolic two days a week with trigger sessions, you're probably going to train appropriately. I, I don't think you want to do any more than that. Maybe even MAPS 15. I know. I think MAPS 15, 15 would be another option for you. Yeah, maybe MAPS 15. How, when, I balked, when I balked, I ran MAPS at, uh, 15 advanced with like a show. I added some. I always got to add some. I added shoulders in there because I was trying to build my shoulders, you know. So don't add so, anything. Yeah, yeah, yeah I don't want yeah. you to. Yeah, don't add, thing. don't add I'm anything. Don't add anything. with it. Don't add anything. I never feel like I'm doing enough. No, 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 you're doing enough. You're doing more than enough. And here's what I- Consistency is everything. I actually want you to look at, kind of reframe the way you approach this too. Like, I I don't want you to think anymore about cutting or bulking. Don't think like, I'm going to cut, I'm going to- Get rid of that. It doesn't matter. It's, I'm I'm eating to take care of myself and feed my, nourish my body and take care and try and improve my sleep. Like that's, that's That's like, that's our goal right now. And you're going to get lean. You're going to build muscle. You're going to get stronger. Don't even think about it as like, oh, this is a cut. This is a bulk. No, it's just, you're, you hit your protein intake. That's all we care about. Eat whole foods. That's all we care about right there with the nutrition. And we are trying to optimize our sleep. And so what that might look like some days is scaling back the intensity in the gym, not really pushing it that hard. Some days and and just really focusing on getting a a night routine, taking care of your body that way. Don't think of these like swings of I'm cutting hard, I'm bulking hard. It's just like just hit the protein intake, take care of your body. And th- that's our first goal right now is the, is to solve that. And what you're going to find is all the, the, the building, the muscle, the leaning out, it's going to start to come together, It'll but, take care of itself. but not until we start to solve the, the sleep issue, because that, that right there, uh, you could have the best workout in the world yeah. and the best diet in the world. And you're going to have a really hard time seeing the results that you want to see. It really drags on you. Oh yeah, absolutely. So oh, yeah. T- tell me about your work schedule, a uh, normal day. And then when you work a second shift, what does it look like? extreme stress and i walk for at least eight hours i work 10 hour shifts but like these last couple weeks i did 50 hours five 10 hour shifts and i walk all day that's why i haven't even touched cardio i have even what time do you start and what time do you stop like when you when you go when you work start what time does it stop so my day i wake up at about 11 i go to the gym get ready i start work at 3 p.m and then i end at one okay Mm -hmm. and that's that's not horrible that's most days yeah do you have blue light blocking glasses? One more time. Do you have blue light gla- blue light blocking glasses? Um, I don't, but I've cut my screen down. I do. I've been doing the three, two, one. Oh, good, oh, good. Oh, good. Yeah. So you know Perfect. what you could do because they're pretty inexpensive on on Amazon. You get the orange tinted ones. Uh, is I would wear them at midnight, so the last hour of work you're wearing blue light blocking glasses, and keep them okay. on until you go to bed. That'll help get to sleep, um, and then focus on being consistent when you go to bed, which I would go to bed right when I got home so that you have time to, to sleep. Yeah, I do. Part of my problem is I'm, I'm diabetic and then I, I pee a lot. So hmm. if I, I go to bed and I wake up at seven, now it's morning, you know, maybe I, there's light right away. Go to the, I have to have everything blacked out. Cause you go to the bathroom, it's light, yep. you're up. Yep. It's hard to go back and sleep. I'm not having trouble falling asleep. It's staying asleep long enough to like, got it. You know, got it. So and it you, just sounds like my circadian rhythms off. Honestly. It is. It's not too bad, but it isn't great, but it's not too bad. It's, fixable. it's consistent. Right. So what you would do is when you get up, uh, so you have everything blacked out. If you need to look to see where you're going, put on the blue light blocking glasses before sit you go down when you pee and, or you can sit okay. down when you, when you <laughs> pee, if you don't, if, yeah, but we won't tell anybody that's, we won't tell anybody about that. Yeah. I refuse to do that. I just keep my eyes closed dog. That's what I do. I go like this, man. I'm feeling my way through the hallway. <laughs> my eyes stay closed. Yeah. Fantastic. Sit so, down. I pee dog. So, so do I. I don't, I don't need to sit down. I, just, I yeah. listen. Yeah. The next day we, everybody knows. Yeah. 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 That's all right. Buddy. That's all right. I st- <laughs> Uh, yeah, but yeah, I would. Get, that's what I would do. Like, if you wake up and oh man, I gotta go pee, you have your blue light glasses next to you on the bed. Again, you can get them pretty inexpensive these days on Amazon. Put them on, 
and then that'll you. that'll minimize the effect that the light will have uh, on you when you go to the bathroom. And then go lay back down, do some belly breathing until you fall asleep. Girl, are you are you in our private forum yet? I am not. Okay, I'm gonna have I'm gonna have Doug hook you up with that so you're in there with us. And because because we got it, bro. I appreciate you. Of course, yeah, yeah. I got you. We there's a, it's, it, we're throwing a bunch of different things at you, and so I kind of want to just check in with me. You know, every few weeks or every month, just check in on what you're doing and like, let's just make some of these changes and adjust along the way. Cause I know we're kind of throwing a bunch of things yeah. like, do this, do that, do this, do that. Um, and yeah, and, the, and, it's going to be a mental game for that, that change with the working out and the diving. That's all it's going to be is a mental game to stick to it. It no, is. But once right. you start to feel yeah. it, once within a few weeks, you'll feel it. And then you'll be very. It motivated. sounds more natural. It sounds yeah. naturally healthy, you know. Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah bro. bro. Your body's we, gonna respond too. If we can stick to that more simplistic plan, I mean, it sounds to me everything you're kind of shooting at us, you're just, it's just ping too ponging much. all over the place. Yeah. Right? And if we can just really like laser you in, right, and just get you focused on eating protein, and then you know restoring your body, you know doing this new workout program where you just do 15 minutes a day and you just get enough so you get stimulus you know you allow yourself to fully recover you know we've worked on our sleep and that's mm -hmm. really the the biggest factor again this is we, we have to figure this out totally with, with, with sleep yeah for sure we're gonna we're gonna throw you in there grail and then i want you to check check in with us okay and, and take some of the advice i also want you to uh don't be don't be weighing yourself that ain't doing us any good right i now. don't i don't give okay. a fuck. It, Good. I hold so much water. Yeah. I hold so much water that it doesn't. It's pointless. It's yeah. just kind of defeating. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Good. Good. No, I, yeah. I don't the scale. Yeah. Good. I don't care about the yeah. scale. I, the mirror, maybe, but that's yeah. even bad too. Yeah. Yeah. Don't. I don't want you to get hung up on that right now. Right now, yeah. like goal one is like we got to get this sleep solved. Totally. We got to we got to solve this. Yeah. Sleep my issue. sleep, bro, because that for that's, sure. That's my, everything. It drags on me. That's everything. What you? What do you? What do you do for work? Where you walk that much? What are you doing? Bro, so I run. <laughs> I run a Japanese printing press and i make continuously folding manifolding like forms for like hospitals and shit oh my god I <laughs> press in the 70s, but i gotta run down like a it's a long haul it's like a it's it's a ways and when it's running fast you gotta run up and down into ink water ratios what? watching shit stress my back be cramped because i'm so full of stress because everything's on me and i'm just training just like they throw you in there and I'm just starting for things that learn. It takes years to learn. So it's so high stress. <laughs> oh it's my bad God. Dude, can you imagine running How anabolic random. three days a week with <laughs> no sleep? <laughs> and then I'll even run to and I'll go to work and I'm working. I was working five twelves at the time. Oh my God. Yeah. We're going to get you some help. Yeah, bro. You're insane. <laughs> dude. Yeah, you're yeah. insane, dude. Completely yeah. mad. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah I, feel, uh, I feel stressed. Wow, though. dude. Uh, wow. All right, well, you're in the I would not have boy. guessed that. Yeah, no, I know. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. That's why I wanted to know. I was so curious. I'm like, what the fuck is this guy doing? Uh, so we're going to throw you in there. Stay in touch with right, us. Bro. Okay. The boys and I are in there. Just check in with us. Let us know what you're doing, how things are going, and we can make little micro adjustments around the way. But okay, just take that initial all advice right, and, and then we'll go from there. All right, bro. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, Justin, before I go, hey, I was watching your episode where you had to explain about the mosh pits. Yeah. And yeah, I felt back like me you up. were by yourself, bro. So I wore the headbanger hat. <laughs> yeah. By yourself, buddy. Yeah, that's my boy. <laughs> Fuck oh, yeah. that, dude. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> All right, y'all. Have a good day, man. Thanks take, for having me on. All right, take bro. Easy. Take it easy, bro. All right, bro. Yeah. What's the cross thing you do? With, uh, it's what does that uh, mean? hardcore, dude. Yeah, yeah. It's, yeah, that's the hardcore community. It is. Yeah. Hey, what? Okay, you what, can what, fit in the most. Hey, explain that job, Doug. What's I have no idea. Why? Just because the Japanese, Japanese yeah, yeah, press? Yeah, yeah. I have no idea what that even is. <laughs> yeah, running. Uh, it sounds like he's like running paper up and down the hall. And he says continuous folds. So yeah. I have no idea. So, so the, the machine probably like, going and he's got to go somewhere to fill it up or something. Yeah, I have no idea. I have to look it up. Yeah, you got to figure this out. This is so interesting to me. It's fascinating. It sounds like it sounds medieval. It does. Like what do they got you doing, bro? So that's hell old school. You know we have computers now, right? <laughs> he's in a machine running so yeah, that it works yeah. ah. <laughs> he's cutting trees making uh, paper you know i mean I, is this not a i mean this has been kind of a conversation we've been having a lot lately it feels like you're talking to really hammering home the sleep thing right yeah. and that's just this has to be he's and he's like this whole extreme like i'm cutting i'm bulking no, i'm doing no, this overthinking it's like, it. it's like yeah way overthinking way, it, overthinking. way overdoing it. especially for someone who's got that much stress in their job like that yeah. in itself is like we just gotta we, we have to calm everything down around yeah us. Yeah. yeah we just, just gotta just solve focused 
you know, energy. But it, the shift isn't horrific. No. Like you, I mean, no. you could you can work with that. Yep. Yeah. If you, if you can get him like tired and like getting to pass out, but yep. by one o'clock or so, yeah, you know yeah, what I'm yeah. saying? And then totally. and get a, he get a decent night of sleep. He'll be okay as long as his room's blacked out. And the whole deal, he'll be fine. Yeah. Which, yeah. by the way, if he's listening to this, like cut the can, metal out. You, you can know. go down to Home Depot, <laughs> and Home night, Depot makes this uh, these blackout stuff that you put on the windows. Super cheap, super easy, and super effective. Or you can use aluminum foil. Right. Well, I mean, that's a yeah, a little less ghetto, <laughs> yeah. but uh, maybe a few cents cheaper. <laughs> that's, what I, that's what we did for oh, my yeah. yeah. That's what my yeah. wife did. For if my... you want to look like you're cooking meth inside hey, your house, that's, that's a great hey, idea. Listen, that was hey, that was that was Jessica did that when uh, Aurelius was little. I, I could come home, I looked, you know, you the foil? front house. I could see the front of the house. Oh like, my god, you got like a way? meth house, bro. I'm like, what the hell, honey? I'd, I'd be like, honey, you can't do that. Yeah. Yeah. We got a baby. Yeah, we have neighbors. Yeah, and we walk out looking all like messed up. Oh my god.